Well, if I could see the old Jeff Hardy in the rear view, I'd probably say off uh, because you've done enough. Uh, you've done enough. So I uh, have no regrets and, and I don't look back um, at that old Jeff Hardy. And if I would, uh, if I had one question, if I could talk to that old Jeff Hardy, I would say, what the f were you thinking all these years, destroying yourself and the fans with what to show for it? Friendship is nothing more than an illusion. Another me is what there will never be. We're all messed up. It's human nature. Another life like this you'll never see. I live for Jeff. I'm tired of hurting for the fans. Why don't they hurt for me once? Represent a moral brother. An, an, an Antichrist. Blue Brit is just absolutely defenseless at this point. Something tells me Jeff Hardy, he's out to finish off Matt Morgan before this Sunday. We finally have the answer to the question that we've had for weeks. The deal is sealed. Mr. Anderson to be the special referee when Matt Morgan guns for Jeff Hardy and the TNA World Heavyweight title. The pieces are in place. Everyone's destiny is in line. Some will climb to even greater heights, yet some will fall from the universe. Matt Morgan, you're just another faceless victim for the Antichrist. And Kenny, oh Kenny, you won't get up this time. Your name will rest in eternal peace. Presents Final Resolution. Live from Orlando, Florida, TNA World Heavyweight Champion Jeff Hardy defends his new title belt against the challenge of the blueprint Matt Morgan with Mr. Anderson as special referee. What does the new immortal regime have in store for Final Resolution? It's time to find out. Hey, Mike, we're a little tardy, but we're here! <laughs> the opening contest for Final Resolution, live on pay-per-view, is scheduled for one fall. It is the number one contenders match for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. Introducing, first of all, the team of Shannon Moore and Jesse Neal. They are each, each. As we open Final Resolution, the tag team Let's take everybody back to this past Thursday's impact and a wild four-way match. Oh yeah, Pierre Money was having some issues with referee Jackson James upset with a lot of his uh, calls and attempted pitfall covers and then Robert Roos took his eye off the ball and Inky over the bucket. They snatched up the win in that four-way match. Contenders match. I mean, but they're going up against Ink Ink. This 
As you said, so much at stake here. Who's gonna get a shot at the Guns Championship? If the Guns remain champions, as you said, they gotta deal with full metal mayhem later. Ink, ink, beer money. All important first step in getting back into the title picture in terms of tag teams here in TNA. Quick apology off the top of final resolution. Taz mentioned we were tardy getting on the air. We apologize for those technical difficulties, but we are off and running. Hey, live TV, anything can happen, baby. Oh. <laughs> You know, I have been so impressed as of late with Ink Inc., both with their just their in-ring ability overall and their guts, as we see Jesse Neal sporting a new variation of that mohawk. Yeah, I, as you, as you would think that uh, Jesse Neal couldn't get any wacky with his head, dude. He did. I think of Jesse Neal and think of his partner Shannon Moore. We saw Jesse step up to the plate recently in a submission rules match against Jeff Jarrett. How about Shannon Moore? He took, on, he took on the Monster Abyss in a casket match. Wow, how about that standing drop kick? Yeah, there's no doubt that the, oh, both members of Ink Ink, Moore and Neal, they are loaded with toughness and gumption and look, a double drop kick right there. We were getting lit. Oh, another one. Double team move for Storm as he turned around and caught the brunt of both members of Ink Ink and Beer Money. You see James Storm around the ringside area. He's calling for a timeout. Well, well yeah, well, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to regroup the momentum right now. You can hear our live audience here in the impact zone solely oh, behind, oh, oh. behind Ink Ink. I want to slow the game down a little bit if you're Beer Money. Oh, watch your back. No chance to slow him down. Quick roll up. Storm shoulders down for two, courtesy to Shannon Moore roll up. A nice deep arm drag, and now Shannon Moore's got himself. He's got a nice arm bar strapped in tight. Got to be careful with your back towards Robin Rude there. James Storm, you never know how, you know, this guy, how many beers this guy <laughs> drinks throughout the day. It's unbelievable. Back up to that vertical base for Storm. It enables him to just overpower Shannon Moore, put him into the corner. Outside, Rude oh. holds him, and that backfired for Beer Money. Ah, you don't see many miscues on behalf of Beer Money. That was a definite miss and cue. Shannon Moore, inverted atomic drop for Storm. Pink right hand at the top of the head. And now, Shannon Moore, he's got James Storm in not a good position. He says he's going for the old game bag region. Oh, but he didn't. Right into that leg drop. Directly across the chest. Follows for the cover and another miss yeah, Communication issues here early on with Beer Money. He heard an atomic for Rude. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect Ink Ink. I mean, they are definitely not prepared. to be this dominant. I'm telling you, my boys, Beer Money, they are getting in, they're in deep trouble here. Off the double team, Storm shot off and then decked in mid-ring. Jesse with an assist from Shannon. Hip toss into the pin for a near fall. And as you pointed out, Mike, and I, we both talked about it, actually, it was uh, the importance of this match, a number one contender's match. I mean, these type matches are vital. No matter if it's a singles competition for a singles championship or a tag team contest, they don't, you know, they're, they're, it's tough to come about a number one contender's match. And, that right by the Mohawk, Robert Root yanking down Neal. Now, I love the fact that we're going to decide the next challengers for the TNA World Tag Team Champions, be they the guns or generation meet after tonight, right here in the ring with a win or a loss. And you got to assume if you're the Motor City Machine Guns, the current World Tag Team Champions, I, I would assume they're not even watching this match. They're getting ready for later on tonight with full metal mayhem. They might not remain champions. Robert Rue just Ooh. another nasty shot. I wonder if Ric Flair, the head honcho of fortune, what if he gave a little perner, a little perner or pointers, as uh, some people say, to Robert Rue on the chop. Perner, it's a Brooklyn thing. Huh? Yeah, I guess so, it's a tacism. <laughs> yeah, you know. And all of a sudden, the complexion of this match, which was ink, ink, 100%, basically from the opening bell, has turned well, around now in favor of Beer Money. Beer Money is utilizing the referee to their advantage, they, and they utilize it, they're getting inking frustrated. I should say they're getting Shannon more frustrated. James Storm, I think, loosening up some tape from around his hand or wrist behind the back of referee Andrew Thomas and trying to use it as a weapon to choke out Jesse Neal. Drops Shannon Moore from the apron. Now look, Shannon, I, you know, I don't blame him for being a 
being upset about what's going on to his partner, but he's got to try and stay in that apron so referee Andrew Thomas and that massive beard can do his job. <laughs> Sometimes that fire of someone like Shannon Moore trying to come in can, can really hurt his tag team partner rather than help corner clothesline as Rude and Storm both connect with the move and off the snap mare. Oh! Oh. Rude snaps the neck of Jesse Neal, and there's the follow drop, follow knee drop by Storm. And the tape is sitting on the bottom rope, as you saw there a moment ago in that shot we had. Referee Andrew Thomas got his hands full. He doesn't see that tape, and it's the evidence, but oh, you didn't see uh, you didn't see the evidence used in the crime. That's my legal ease, by the way. Well, whether they tag in or not, we've seen sometimes they tag and sometimes they don't. You gotta love the way that Beer Money's turned this around. Well, yeah. Both Rude and Storm coming in, hit and run, get the fresh man right back and, on. And that is just tremendous tag team expertise by Beer Money. And I think we're gonna start, really start seeing Jesse Neal get broken down here. And Jesse's so close to tagging his partner Shannon Moore, but not close enough. Talk about experience and the edge that it brings. James Storm, Robert Rude, Beer Money in this match. High profile, high pressure matches. Beer Money has had so many more here in TNA than Inc. Inc. They, a, they've been there before. That's a great point, Mike. I mean, and that's they're big time players. They have that main event style. They're used to the pressure of being in a big match. The pressure of the stipulation here of this number one contenders match. That's big pressure. At Speaking of pressure, yeah. pressure being put on the face of Jesse Neal. At the same time, let's reference Inc. Inc. and what a victory would do for Jesse Neal and Shannon Moore in terms of their career going forward, not only making them number one contenders for the tag titles, but boy, just to say that you get that win over Beerman, and I know they got the victory on impact in the right. full-way match. But oh. again, big time. Final resolution pay-per-view, final one of the year. This would be big for Inc. Inc. Well, I definitely think there's a gigantic upside. Win, lose, or draw for Inc. Inc. And their future here, in my opinion, of tag team wrestling here in TNA. Jesse Neal trying to mount some sort of a comeback, and now he's got to try to get his body over there to tag in his partner, the fresher man, Shannon Moore. Just when it looks like Jesse's gonna do that. He's cut the ring off, man. You know, exactly. I think Robert Root is doing so well, but right there, Root got jawbreaker right into the mohawk. Yeah. Look at that mohawk. It's like the red rooster with that mohawk. Remember him? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I remember. I remember him. Boom. Well, here we go. Swing and a miss with the clothesline by Root. Oh, Shannon Moore takes down Storm, and now Shannon Moore turns his attention to Root. Series of rights, momentum off the ropes with the drop kick. Look at that wow. Oh, man, he cracked. Cracked Robert Root to Shannon Moore. Spin kick in the face. Whoa. Snap off the head scissors. Talk about Dilly Gaff, huh? <laughs> Shannon Moore cooking up. Gonna go double team here on Rude. Shot off into the ropes. Nice hung off to the ropes. Oh, watch out! Jesse Neal clotheslines Rude to the floor. Shannon now Morgan. Now what? Now what? Look. Taken down off the apron by Rude, and now Shannon Moore, Robert Rude battling outside. Wow, elevated right up. Oh, one fluid motion to the apron. Shannon Moore is on fire, man. He looks great, as does Jeff. Look at Jesse! Slingshot. Almost overshot Storm. I think he grazed the top of his head. Look at that moonsault! Shades of Ultimo Dragon right there. Asahi <laughs> moonsault! Oh, wait, oh, not, oh, not the... That's the Boozer Cruiser. Nah, you can't. You don't have a license for that thing. What's he doing? <laughs> Come on. You gotta be bombed to drive that thing. You could drive it, Mike. Count me in! <laughs> and that, yeah, that Bombay Sapphire, that is with mine. <laughs> Gonna roll him back in. Easy, easy. Roots <laughs> to Jesse Neal. Shannon Moore just fed him right into his partner. Ooh. Wrenched his neck. Look at that neck breaker by Moore. We got gonna get him here. Go. Here's two. Got him. Oh, Boy, that was close. Oh, but Rude. Man, I'll tell you what. Gotta give it up for Rude. He had the wherewithal to kick out. That impressive swinging neck breaker. Just do it, do it, Jesse. Don't wait now. Play to the crowd. 
asking whether they should finish off Beer Money. Ah, not so fast, amigo. Storm takes more down from the top. Oh. Oh. Went to spit the beer in Neil's face, but Jesse caught him before he could spit. Oh! I'll tell you, man, Ink, Ink, I have never seen them this amp up in a contest. They are just loaded with intensity. Jesse Neal. Both of these teams, Taz, it just reflects the importance of this opening match with the number one contenders. Oh, my God. Wow. Last call, super kick is Rude sidestep Neal. DW by double team. Stack them up. Rude gets three. The winners of the match. I mean, you know, this was just the makings of it getting the Duke and Beer Money just one step ahead. And now they are the number one contenders in the world tag team titles. Wow, what a matchup, man. Talk about physicality. What a way to kick off final resolution. Good to three more. Impressive, impressive, impressive. It kick looked great there, even in the loss, well, it looked phenomenal. Sure Got to admit that as well, and it's Mike today and Taz. We welcome you to TNA's final pay-per-view of 2010, appropriately named Final Resolution. And you know, Taz, when Matt Morgan initially went to bat for Mr. Anderson, who was sidelined with concussion issues, well, it cost Morgan his shot with Immortal, his spot with the Immortal regime, but then it opened up the door because the blueprint he had a chance to face Jeff Hardy for the TNA title. Well, correct. And look, last month at Turning Point, we saw Morgan get a pin on Hardy. And, and, you know, but the rookie referee, Jackson James, he blew the call. He admitted it. It happens. It happens in pro sports. But tonight, different story. Champion Jeff Hardy. Morgan is the challenger. And who is the special guest referee? Wow. Mr. Anderson. That's our main event tonight at Final Resolution. We have three other championship matches tonight. X Division title on the line, the TNA TV championship as well, and the TNA tag team titles in the full metal mayhem match that we talked about, and those titles all to be defended at Final Resolution tonight. And speaking of champions, we're going to send it to our broadcast colleague, Christy Hemi. She's standing by with the TNA Knockouts champion, Madison Ray. Take it, Christy. Coming up next on Final Resolution, it's going to be Mickey James versus Tara in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Now, Madison, it's... Is it just me, or am I looking, like, exceptionally perfect tonight? <laughs> Are you at all worried about Mickey James tonight with Tara? Okay. No, I'm not worried, because as everyone knows, Christy, worrying gives you premature wrinkles. You shouldn't worry so much. To answer your question, no, I'm not worried about Mickey James. She will never, ever get to me or my knockout's title. Do you know why? Because to do that, she'd have to get through Tara tonight in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Tara knows why she was brought back into TNA, and that was to protect the princess. And I know full well that that's what she's going to do tonight. Well, you sound really confident, but is Tara that confident? I mean, she's not the one vying for the belt. Why wouldn't she be confident, Christy? She's been kicking Mickey's ass since the day she got here. Okay, any more questions? Okay, Mickey James and Tara up next. I'm, I'm here to be the number one and the champion. Mickey James is still pissing me off. And we have a lot of history, as I said before, and I'm not done, I'm not done. There's, you know, there, obviously Tara and I have history, so. War's on again. I don't know what she came here to portray as knockout dads, but she's mine. I'm telling you, I am going to tear her limb from limb. This what? is not over. Seeing it for the first time in front of the audience, and she just comes out and attacks me. Why? Why? Does, does she really have that big of a problem with me? You know, what, what did I ever do to her? Well, she went out singing. What? Went behind her, gave her a chance to turn around. She didn't see me. Took her down. She's so twisted and demented in her head. I think she's taking this one little thing that may have happened freaking five years ago and twisted it and turned it into something that's making a mountain out of a molehill. I mean, seriously, we're grown ass women here. We can talk about this, we can figure it out, but it's, I'm done. I'm done playing this nice girl. I'm over it. You know what? I am a bully. What can you say? 
You know what I mean? She's pissed me off in the past. I'm not done. The way I see it is I don't care how we finish it, we're going to finish it. Whether it's in a cage, whether it's at the end of a strap, whether it's a barnyard bra, I don't really care. But there's going to be a finale. Which TNA knockout will stand tall when Tara battles Mickey James in a Falls Count Anywhere match? The following contest is a Falls Count Anywhere match. Introducing, first of all, making her way to the ring, Tara! And as Tara arrives on her motorcycle for this Falls Count Anywhere match with Mickey James, I don't think we have ever had here in TNA in terms of the knockouts a more physical rivalry between two competitors than what we've seen in recent weeks from Tara and her opponent tonight, Mickey. Well, I, think, I, I agree with you. I think it's awesome. That's just my opinion. Two hot girls just pounded on each other. And now, introducing her opponent, Mickey Chase. Video package that previewed this Falls Count Anywhere match talked about their history pre-TNA, the issues that they had even before they arrived here. And Tara feels like Mickey James played a little politics that he cost her her job. Maybe she's just using that to fuel her own offense here in this rivalry with Mickey James, but that's the way she feels, and she's been very outspoken about it. Well, she look at Tara basically telling Mickey, come out here, let's fight out here. It's false count anywhere. Casey means pinfall. All submission can happen anywhere in the arena here. So, I mean, I, I don't know if. Looks like Tara's having a match with that guardrail. Who's winning? Well, Looks like the guardrail, dude. Oh, look, there's a cover. Peel outside. Well, that's smart by Mickey right away to try and capitalize on Tara landing hard in that guardrail. Oh, man. Well, let's be honest about what Tara is here for Madison Ray, the knockout champion. She's a roadblock. Oh, yeah, I guess so. She's there to deny. Mickey James from getting a shot at the TNA Knockout Champion. And Madison pretty much said so in the pre-match interview. Well, look, they might. I mean, would Madison even be the Knockout's Champion if Tara didn't lay down and basically give it a title? Good point. Well, here comes Mickey. Watch Rips. Oh, that missile drop kick. Mickey James. Very nice. Drop kick wasn't bad either. Roll the coat for the pin. Gets falls count anywhere. That means yet yeah, even in the ring. Something unique for these two. Yeah, that's true. Remember I mean, back on Thanksgiving night, just the brawl that started in catering, all the knockouts get involved. We saw Thursday where Tara busted up Mickey's singing performance. And they battled all over outside the impact zone. It's, it's Ooh, just been crazy. And, and it's two. just continuing. Look at these shots right here by Tara. God, Tara just pounding, pounding on Mickey, just crushing, stepping on Nick, Mickey's face. Mickey's made it obvious from the moment that she arrived here in TNA. She's had her sights set on that knockout title. That's been her goal. Big recent win over Angelina Lob on impact. Oh, ooh, quickly taken out to the apron by Tara, but Mickey with the recovery and Look Tara that. caught her unaware right there. Tara really brought a hand around and popped Mickey in the face. Mickey never expected it. Oh wait, she Mickey, she went under the, went under the ring. I think uh, I realize it. Well, you disappear, Tara. Any idea? Well, there's four sides to the ring. Mm -hmm. Might want to check all down. four. But she's not blonde, Tara. Watch out! Oh! Running drop kick sends Tara out to the floor. Mickey's gonna fly. Slides down. Catches her baseball style. And this is all legal. I mean, going under the ring, hide and come across the other way. There's no count outs, no disqualifications. Falls count anywhere. I don't often see that much with knockouts, right? Or exactly. Off. No, that's, but if you think about it, what better way to settle the issue once and for all between these two than with this falls count anywhere match? Uh, the way the, uh, the intensity is just at a, the highest level it could be. Uh, between these two, I mean, I'm shocked, I and mean, thank God we haven't seen any of these ladies hurt each other in a bad way yet, yeah, anyway. Ooh. Using the hair 
of Mickey James as a handle. That Hall of Jersey hanging there, by the way. The Patriots? Who is it, Brady? Anyway, <laughs> enough. Dallas is over the guardrail, going to follow up out in the crowd. The guy didn't have a Jets jersey, going to have to turn on him, Taz. <laughs> Ooh, face first goes Mickey that time right into the, that steel chair. Well, there it is. Oh. Jackson James down for the count. And the ref makes just two only for Tara on the pin. Usually this is what, what Tara's real good at. She'll keep the pressure on her opponent. Not giving her much room to breathe. That, that's the mark of a veteran, a former world champion. Oh, right into that full trust. Back first into the steel structure. Full of trust. That too. Again, uh, you can see they're kind of heading outside the impact zone. And as we said, falls count anywhere. <laughs> this thing can go anywhere. Just throttling Tara, choking her against the wall. The Tara those knees all back up. Vicious, violent shots with the knees to the midsection. Oh! Basically, the referee is just following these ladies around to, to make the pin cover. Really can't stop them from doing anything they want to do. No! Now watch. Gonna go well outdoors. Oh, almost. They have wheelchairs out there? Again, yeah, we said falls kind of anywhere. This is like. Oh, where the hell are you going? You're not usually allowed backstage, Mike. You're usually out there. Where, where, what is this area? I don't know, but I'm getting seasick. Ooh. Oh! Wow. A little slap on the tuchus. Oh, wow. Talk about shooting some water, huh? That hit me. <laughs> Jealous. <laughs> Ooh. Back first into the concession stand goes Tara. Mickey comes out of it. Tara's got an answer. Those knees have just stopped Mickey every time she goes oh, on the God, offense. What a shot right there, Mike. You see that exposed abdomen? What that is? Signboard, pretty much anything that's not nailed down. Oh, this thing's just turned into a street fight, more or less. Physicality unmatched when it comes Ooh. to the TNA knockouts. We said it even before the match started, and this thing has not disappointed in the least. These girls are bringing it, man. They are just bringing it. Oh, watch no, out, no, 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 no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, I think Tara had a, maybe a pile driver in mind. That would have been. Drop right oh, here we go. Here we go. Jackson James counts two and not two, able to get two. the three. I'm surprised that time that Tara was hey. able to kick out after going How? back first on to the concrete. How tough is Tara who's <laughs> able to kick out of a backdrop on cement? And they're getting a scenic view of uh, backstage here at Universal Studios, huh? Everywhere, all over Orlando, Florida between these two. And it's certainly not a surprise from the oh. moment they started this rivalry. Their battles have been epic here in TNA when it comes to the knockouts. I think they're, they're headed towards the theme park, aren't they? Yeah. They're watching them get hit by like that one of those roller coasters. That happened to me once. <laughs> that explains it. Been wondering for the last year and a half. <laughs> Ooh, oh, oh. Yeah. Tara able to fight back, catches her with the boot. Now gonna try and drag Mickey again by the hair. I'll tell you, these I, I've had my share of false kind of wear matches whoa, and whoa, I, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Quick roll I don't know, cover. Two. <laughs> That, I, I, that, that's a first. The Roll up on the sewer cover exactly. is a first. I'll tell you, I've had my share, Mike, in these type of matches, and, and it really, from a cardiovascular standpoint, it takes a lot out of you because you're moving all over the place. You're not confined to the ring. I mean, your, your legs so many more to, steps. Absolutely, your legs, your quads, your calves—they start to burn. <laughs> Mickey dragged back up to her feet by Tara. Tries to fight off. 
There they go. That, that, that grip that Tara has had on her hair, and there she goes. It's like a cement, some kind of a cement uh, wall. I guess a wall would be the word. Yep. Forearm shot. Oh, look at that. Followed, that followed with a kick right kick. to the gut. Yeah. That was pretty good. Oh, oh. The fist press. Cover, cover, cover. There's two. two. That was innovative. Popping out with a fist press off the top of the uh, dumpster, whatever that was. Directly down onto the cement goes Mickey. Now where are they headed? It's like towards oh, the ladies' room. Well, let's make a right instead and go to the men's room. Men's room gets a big pop. All right. <laughs> This is, this is all good. So, look at that guy. What the? <laughs> well, kind of busy back there, isn't it? Well, you know what they say about guys hanging out in the men's room. No. Can't say that I do. Well, right now, we got two hot knockouts. Oh, what the? Got a guy reading the sporting news in the. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> He didn't even wash his hands. <laughs> what an exchange between these two. I don't know if this referee is... Jackson James, he might have gave up and just walked out. I don't blame him. Oh, no, no, not funny. What the hell? What is, who, who was is that, that Madison? It was. Madison Rain, first the fire extinguisher, then the turn of belt. Three comes back in. Jackson James wow. and after the Madison Reed interference, he counts three. The win of the match. Tara! How smart of Tara and Madison. Tara, Percy Water in there. Sitting and waiting in the men's room was Madison, which is kind of odd in itself, but yeah, you never know. But what a game plan by the knockouts champ and Tara. She has Tara do all the dirty work, interferes on the end, and Tara gets the win, falls count anywhere. Coming up next, Robbie E versus Jay Lethal for the X Division Championship, and I believe that Cookie will be up in a shark cage. Listen, bro, I've already beaten Lethal in a street fight, bro. I've beaten Lethal in a fist pump challenge, bro, and I beat him for my X Division title, my dude. Tonight will be no different. And Cooks, you're not going in the shark cage. Relax. Okay, okay, listen. Okay, Robbie, it's not Shark Week. Okay, I'm not wearing a wetsuit. I'm not scuba diving. Relax, and I don't Cooks, see any sharks backstage. Not going Robbie, I'm not getting in the cage. I already told you, you're not going in the cage. You, you, you sound a little scared, Cookie. I mean, you were talking all that schmack. Bitch, if I wanted your opinion, I'd beat it out. Okay, okay, I think this interview's over. Bye, bye. Ladies and gentlemen, up next, it's the first of four championship bouts tonight at final resolution with the X Division Championship on the line. Here's the X Factors to preview this title bout. Last month, TNA's Turning Point pay-per-view event it was Robbie E with illegal assistance from Cookie who defeated Jay Lethal to bring the X Division Championship to the Jersey Shore. And then this past Thursday on Impact, Robbie, a huge favorite to win that Jersey fist pump showdown, but well, Jay had the last word. He laid out the champ with that lethal right hand. We're gonna prevent the pattern that we've seen develop where Cookie repeatedly interferes in Robbie's matches because in tonight's X Division title return match, for the former champ, Jay Lethal, well, Cookie is going to be hung inside a shark cage high above the impact zone. It's time to find out if Robbie E can win without her help. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the X Division Championship of the World. Introducing, first of all, from Elizabeth, New Jersey, he is the challenger, Jay Lethal. Former X Division title holder with the win.
well-deserved return match, especially when you consider how many times that he's hooked up in matches with Robbie E, only to have interference by Cookie proves the difference. Introducing his opponent, accompanied to the ring by Cookie. He is the X Division champion of the world, Robbie E. Come on, man, Rob. Look. Oh, 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 yeah. I knew Taz was going to come to life. <laughs> well, <laughs> Cookie's like, oh, Cookie is not a happy Cookie camera. <laughs> that she's got to get inside that shark cage. Ah, poor girls up to oh, 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 feel bad for Cookie, she's got to get in the cage. I think you were feeling bad for Cookie. Oh, look, but then my man's like, oh, yo, I love it. Robbie, Robbie. I don't want to go in, I don't want to go in. You got to agree with Christy Hemming. Not had it up to here with the whining of Cooks. She's the one. Definitely whines a little bit. Oh, wait, comes a big one. Look at this. Here we go. Get down deep. Oh, <laughs> X Division champagne right there. <laughs> Little Lethal, Lethal's loving his stomach. Get in the cage, honey. Now, pre-match interview, we heard Cookie Bobby E talk about how she was not going to get inside the shark cage. How many people have to get in the cage? How many? Because that thing is built for, I mean, how much do you think this girl weighs? That thing's huge. It's got to be at least 26, 20 inch gauge steel. But I ain't working, working guy. I'm not doing it. No. Hey. No. Oh, God. Heaven, heaven's going to force the girl. That's not nice. Get your hands off her own. Jeez. Oof. Senior official Earl Hebner not having any luck getting Cookie in the cage. But Lethal says, you just love that, don't you? <laughs> Lethal says, he's going to take matters into his own hands. We're going to stack up Robbie E in the corner. Look at this. Cookie's like, I ain't having it. I'm out of here. But a trio wall action. Robbie E hung up in the corner. Cook says she's taken off, headed for the Garden State. Come and get me. Come and get me. Look at Cookie. She's still. What the hell? No. Hey, this is Shark Cage. Oh my God, shot for I told you he meant to stack cage. I said it. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> my broadcast partner foreshadowing the fact that shot for back to the impact zone here at Final Rest. Whoa, at Final Rest. And... Oh, he's obviously been doing some leg strength. He's a powerhouse. <laughs> Look at shot for He looks stealth. Robbie E still hooked up in the corner, by the way. Well, who better to put in a shot cage than a shot boy? I mean, really. Mission accomplished. Mike, I think that's a real shot cage. I've done some shot hunting, and that's not I have on the Atlantic. You gave me 18 minutes on the, on the steel gauge construction. Swing and a miss with the close by Robbie E. Enables Lethal to get things going. Off the chop, he follows up with a right hand, fist pump style, just like he did on impact, top of the head. Now look at this, I mean, you could see Lethal is in hot pursuit of the X Division title that he once held. Love it. Cookie headed up to the ceiling of the impact zone. Oh my God, how are they bringing that girl? Is she gonna shout at that? Got a little more room, don't we? Holy smokes. Man, did she interfere that much? I mean, really? God. What do you mean did she interfere that much? Match after match. Every match, basically, that Robbie E's been involved in here. It's what, it's what got him the X Division title to this point. It's what's kept the X Division title for the shore. And this Outside is... in shoulder block. Here comes high risk Ooh. lethal missile drop kick. See, lethal loves this. Oh, that's not nice. What do you mean, not? Uh, what did he do? Poor girl. She's obviously upset. Nope. Wait, wait, wait. She's up there. She's screaming at that thing. Up 
opportunity that Jay Lethal has been asking for. Oh. Just give me a one-on-one -on -one match with Robbie E. Because as he told us on Impact and Reaction this past oh. week, I know that under these circumstances that I can beat him for the title. Yeah, well, that remains to be seen. I mean, oh, God. Now, how does oh. that fall in the yambag world? That's South Jersey yambagish. Lethal. He's just got. Oh my God! He's got him. Oh, he's got Robbie. My dude. He's got him right where he wants him. Lethal better keep his eye on the prize. I mean, that's the key. You've got Cookie up in the cage. Get your focus. Get your attention. Totally on the task at hand, which is getting back that X Division title. Yeah, I mean, look. Put aside. I mean, everything with Robbie and the fist pump and the psycho sculpturing lotion haircut. He usually has some tremendous skills, hence why he's the exhibition champion. But right now, Lethal, he's looking good right now. Oh, man, don't turn around, Paisan. You're yep. in trouble. He's going to light him up. Yep. Bam. Oh! You know what these two have in common? The fact that they're both from New Jersey. But in terms of similarities, Taz, it's about where it ends. Well, no argument for me on that. I'd actually... Oh! Jay Lethal, he oh. looks, oh, say, he's looking awesome. And Robbie yeah. E finally able to turn this matchup in his favor as Lethal crashes into the corner. You could just Robbie on him with rights and lefts. You could see the sense of urgency because Robbie realizes the opening at hand here. <laughs> Dedicating something to Cookie in the cage. Well, it's true love between Cookie and, and Robbie. You know, oh, wow, what a run of back elbow. Impact. Shot leads to a cover and a far late hook for two. Well, what a letdown it would be. I mean, it, hypothetically, for argument's sake, I mean, if uh, if Robbie were to lose here the legal, you would got to think that Cookie up in that bird cage, that shark cage, yeah. could be very disappointed in a man. My dudes. That's the idea. Let's make this one on one. Viciously fired into the corner. And as Lethal flashes down after... How much was Shark Boy? Why'd he show up here? What's up with that? Really? What do you mean? I guess Lethal... You just, you just told me 20 seconds ago that you weren't surprised that he was here, and now you're shot. I'm all over the place. <laughs> Lethal gonna try and fight back, does so. A series of boots to the midsection and measures and connects with a right hand at the top of the head. Another one right there on the money. Crowd. Showing their support for the uh -oh, challenger. Uh -oh, uh oh, look at that. Oh, no, nice. Cover, pin. Robbie E. So close to keeping the goal. Robbie Smart. Excellent point in the match. Hook you, hook yourself. Some sort of a weird choke or a sleeper. Jay Luther realizes that. He's trying to get his body away from Robbie to uh, you know, get some of that pressure off, off of his esophagus and face the man. That's what you want to do. That's exactly Smart. what he's done. He's turned it around. At least a side angle on trying to break this up. And with the exposed ribs of the champ as a target, Lethal drives the elbows twice right into the ribs, but he gets pulled right back into the sleeper. Yeah, Jay Lethal having a hard time getting out of the sleeper, trying to break that grip of... You no, know, Robbie's got to have that strong finger strength from dealing with the hair roll. Because really he's his hair, he's got you know, a little product in his hair. Yeah, gel. Jim Tan wrestle, GTW. Mm -hmm. Look at that. See, look at that head. Look at, look at Cookie. Cookie in a cage. Sounds like something you serve on Christmas. Robbie E screaming at the referee. Ask him, ref. Might be a case where Lethal just Might passes out. out. Yeah, Lethal. It looks like on the verge, Hebner checking, tapping on the hand, the wrist of Lethal to see if there's any life. Drops oh, the hand, this. that's one. Lethal might be getting choked out. He might be out. On the verge gonna, here. Gonna retain. I think uh, Rob is going to retain the exhibition goal. Nope. Not going to happen. Lethal slaps the hands together. Trying to get something going here is Lethal. Step one, spin around. Step two, back up to your feet to the vertical base. Oh! And step three, even better. Drop down, Robbie E, head first right into the turnbuckles. Yeah, that definitely rocked Robbie's world. So did that right hand. Oh. 
Look at Lethal getting the better of this mid ring exchange as the how, challenger. How bad does Jay Lethal walk back? The X Division gold. Oh! Explosive move. Coming off the ropes with the forearm. Follow clothesline. Wow, decapitation style. And then the knife edge. Oh, handspring. Oh, nice. Jay Lethal, outstanding handspring to that back elbow. Shades in a great mooder. Nice. Now, uh -oh. ready for a little lethal combination. Here we go. Could have a new champ. Here, two. Come on, that's what I'm saying. Really, you got to tip your cap to Robbie E. Like the man or not, that was impressive. He was able to kick out. Agreed. Frustration Eight. evident right there on the face of the challenger, Jay Lethal, as Robbie E. Going to make his way to the ring ropes, maybe just to assist himself in, in getting back up to his feet. Yeah. Still up in that shot tank. Is Cookie. Oh, the clothesline missed. How about that? Lethal oh, 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 over. Clumped heads a little bit there. Contact made as Lethal crashes. Look at, look at, look at, look at Cookie. Look at she's such a motivator, right? This is such a motivator. Look at her. Yeah, she's a screamer. <laughs> oh, what was that? Who's that? Right, Toss something down from the shark oh, cage. It was intercepted by so referee, senior oh. official. Oh, oh, she got her. She got you right. Oh, Depot, what's going on up there? Oh, Jane Lethal takes it out of the hands of Robbie E. Some kind of spray. Oh, sprays it right in the face, right in the eyes. Hits the lethal injection, but Hedner's not even going to count. With when Hedner turned around, I think he saw lethal spray yeah. in Robbie E.'s face and eyes. Lethal got busted. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Earl Hebner has disqualified Jay Lethal, the winner of the match and still X Division champion of the world, Robbie E. Robbie, what do you want the referee to do? Earl Hebner's doing his job. Oh, yeah, really? Doing his job? Made the right call? I mean, it's tough luck. Well, tell me about the common theme. Yes, Robbie E keeps the title because of what? The interference of Cookie, if you think about it. Oh, now you're gonna blame it. She's yes. up on top of the rafters in the uh, short tank. I don't know what she tossed down first that was intercepted by Earl, but then a spray can. I look like a pearl necklace. But anyway, right, you see, uh, she's finally out of the, uh, Cookie's out of the cage. Wow, what a celebration these two are gonna have. Frustration big time for Jay Lethal. Well, Lethal thought that this was going to be his chance. Finally get Robbie E one on one, not have to deal with the repeated interference of Cookie. But again, it's her interference that comes back and it backfires because Lethal's disqualified. Robbie E remains the champ. And well, Cook Cooks is going to celebrate even if Robbie E's right out. Cookie's acting like uh, a she's the X Division champion. He's holding with the title, meanwhile. Poor Robbie is out there, all beat up. Jay Lethal really took it. To the champion. What the hell is she doing? It's like she's taking a victory lap. Uh, she's proud of the, that her man, you know, retained his title. Really? Yeah, really. Robbie Lee's out on the floor, and she's parading around the ring with his well, championship that. belt. Not shot for you. Get it up with this guy. Come on. Everybody loves this guy. Sharky back for a second appearance. Sharky. Huh. You tell him, folks. Shot How much of that can you take? We might want to go back uh, in the deep sea, wherever he just came from. Slap around over here.
It is final resolution. My guest at this time, Tommy Dreamer. Now, Tommy, coming up next, it's Rhino versus RVD in a first blood match. Now, these guys, both of them, you've had a very long history with. What are your thoughts about them going against each other? You know, I'm actually a little sad about it. Um, thinking about history, in Orlando, Florida, some 10 years ago, Rhino broke Rob Van Dam's leg in a match, uh, and, and Rob was out for 11 months, and it made them friends. Mm. It, it's sad to me because, again, I get it, man. I, I get Rhino. Have, we've all done things we don't want to do, but I hate the fact that he had to go and choose Eric Bischoff, that scumbag Eric Bischoff. He, he's fighting for his job <laughs> tonight. Another man has to go out there and make someone bleed, especially when they were friends. Rhino, Rob, I wish you guys luck. Tonight, final resolution is an end to an extreme era. RBD, I wouldn't be worrying about what's behind you. I'd be worrying about what's in front of you. In front well, of you. Eric Bischoff, he made his plan crystal clear. Get in Rob Van Dam's head. I don't know who I can trust anymore. This is what Bischoff wants. Instead of being divided, we should all come together, man. I'm looking for Bischoff's boy, my friend that's going to attack me next. And you know that. And you're being awfully defensive about me finding out. You need your head fixed. And I say we go old school. And we'll settle this the way we should. Well, there was a lot of emotion involved in my match with Tommy. We had feelings going into it. Tommy felt like I was uh, accusing him of something, which I was. I thought that he was setting me up. I thought it was a trap. I owe Tommy an apology. RVD, I think he finally realizes his true enemy is Jeff Hardy. Wait, 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 wait hold on. That's Rhino. Wait, whoa. He just hit the gore on Rob Van Dam. I mean, I was told all along that one of my friends was going to be turning on me, and my instincts told me there was something to that. Tommy should have known. I should have known. We all should have known. After Turning Point, my contract here in TNA was expired. The only person that cared was Eric Bischoff. He gave me a choice, employment or unemployment. Rhino, I don't know how you can stand by your decision to completely sell out. But you think you're doing right by your family, you're not. Because how the hell are they going to feel when I got you busted open at Final Resolution? Let's call this a first blood match, hardcore style. My agenda is to bust Rhino open. I don't want to pin him, one, two, three. I want to bust Rhino open. So that is my focus. That's what I want to do. That's all I want out of this match. I'm going to make him wish he never set foot in that ring with me. I have a child to feed. I have a family to take care of. He's got a dog to feed and a wife to feed. Do you think I'm going to go out there half-ass? Do you think I'm not going to train tomorrow? Every day that goes by, every minute, every second, I'm going to think about stepping in that ring, making him bleed, and getting the money I deserve. The War Machine, Rhino, faces the whole effing show. Rob Van Dam in a first blood match. Someone's gonna bleed. Gore, gore, gore. The following contest is a first blood match. Introducing, first of all, from Detroit, Michigan, the War Machine, Brian. Stakes do not get much higher for an individual like Rhino, who's fighting for a contract here in TNA. Tommy Dreamer addressed the pre-match interview, upset about Rhino associating with Eric Bischoff. Want to get your thoughts on that, Taz, after the intro of his opponent. Rob Van Dam! Rob Van Dam! And now, introducing his opponent from Battle Creek, Michigan, weighing in at 232 pounds, he is Rob Van Dam! But Rhino has watched EV2 members just dropping one by one. Most recently, Sabu, Raven, fired from TNA with his contract expiring last month after the Turning Point pay-per-view. 
this match has been jump-started even before the opening bell. I mean, we, we heard Tommy Dreamer talk about how upset he was at Ryder associating with Immortal and Eric Bischoff, but it's about getting a contract. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, look, it's desperate times, big time for Rhino, and that, that's what that's what I think, that's what I think it makes Rhino a, a little bit of a favorite against Rob Van Dam. I mean, listen, I've had the opportunity to compete against both these men. And I, you know, I will say, when you've wow. got to compete against Van Dam, there's different layers of Van Dam's offense, which makes him just lethal. Where Rhino just comes right at you. It's a simple game plan. First blood, first man who bleeds loses the match. So, so you know. can I draw the conclusion that you think, the, in terms of their ring styles, that it's probably Rhino favored because well, maybe he has a more physical presence? Uh, yeah, I definitely think so. I definitely would favor Rhino. But I got to say, I mean, Van Dam with just a couple of those kicks in combination could definitely, you know, bust the nose and make it bleed or pop a tooth out of your mouth. So, you see Rhino again biting the man. You know, trying to get blood out, out of Van Dam. Referee Andrew Thomas with the towel in hand is there to make sure that the first individual who bleeds in this match loses in tight with the drop kick. And RVD springs off the ropes. Oh. Well, right now, look, you see him. Yeah, it's not about that, no, pins, it's not it's about, not about submission. Right, right. So you're not going to see these two competitors going for pinfalls. He went to the mount, did RBD, reigns in the rights, now going to put the boots right in the face of Rhino. Maybe skid that boot right across the face. That's a good way to open him up. Well, you know, to me, a first blood match, uh, it's just, it's so intriguing because you're more or less, oh, when you're competing, who's going to leg drop him? There it is. That's what he was going to do. <laughs> Been there, felt it. So, you know, I've seen that movie a few times. But but the thing is, it's like you know that you're going to see somebody bleed. Because each combatant is trying to make the other bleed. I mean, so, oh, oh, watch out, here comes Rhino. I think Rhino said something towards the end of it, the video package. We heard Rhino say, I'm going to get the money. It's about money. And it's about Rhino right now. I said he's desperate. He needs... He needs a contract. What we were talking about with, with the reference to the Tommy Dreamer interview, and that's why I think that Rhino's the favorite in this match because of what he's fighting for. It's his life, his wrestling life. Trying to get a contract with Eric Bischoff, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, the immortal regime. But let me tell you, Mike, don't ever think that Rob Van Dam is, is someone's, uh, you know, welcome mat or, or, you know, he's going to be like the setup guy for Rhino to get a contract here. I think of everything that Van Dam has been through in the recent months. He's a former TNA World Champion. He's, and he's a world champion who never actually lost his title. That's, that's exactly right. Oh! Kick connects Rhino out to the floor. And with the war machine out, Van Dam bows to the crowd. Well, it looks like Rob's showboating, but believe me, he's not. It's all calculating by Rhino. His style, he just, he, he, watch this, look at this, look, look at that, wow. look at that flexibility in the legs and the spine and the buttocks of Van Dam. He's an amazing athlete, a special competitor. And referee Andrew Thomas got those gloves on, got a towel in hand, checking to see if there's blood. Wanted to make sure if Rhino's head made contact with that steel guardrail and might have opened it up, referee. Right there, and but Rhino with the longer hair coming down into his face is something you got to be aware of too when you're the referee, so that it might not cover up the potential for a wound. Talking about Van Dam and everything he's been through here in TNA in recent months from that brutal attack at the hands of the Monster Abyss, he found out that it was Jeff Hardy who stabbed him in the back. The title that he never lost, taken away, the World Heavyweight Championship. Bischoff, Bischoff in, fueling the paranoia with well, RDD yeah. and EV2. And, but to me, I just sense that Van Dam has has more of a focus, more concentration, more at peace with himself in recent weeks than he has been in months. Well, I agree. And, and, and Rhino right now is in the driver's seat. But again, you got to be careful with Rob Van Dam. His body, it can sustain, oh, tons of wow. punishment. And Rhino's dishing out tons of punishment. Bad landing. Lower back region of RVD. You heard the impact 
that it may just reverberated that sound did throughout the impact zone as he crashed down. Courtesy of Rhino and the War Machine takes him to the steel and gonna try and charge him and break his head trying the, that guard rail. Trying to open Van Damme's skin up on his forehead. That's exactly what Rhino's doing. Rhino not, not wasting any motion, just going right back. Not letting Van Damme breathe. It's pretty much been the story of Rhino's offense from the, the time he started his career. Right, full speed ahead, yep. directly go at him. And again, this, this match here, same thing, first blood, no disqualification. Basically, can do whatever you got to do here to get your opponent to bleed. Referee's got a tough job. He's got to really have a keen eye to see if there's any sort of blood. You get a bloody nose and lose the match. You know what I mean? Look at that. Oh, wow. This the moonsault. Oh. oh. Caught inside. Oh, wow. With the gore. Van Damme, Van Damme with the two quick moves, and then when he landed on his feet, awesome. he just got gored right out of his freaking boots. That was awesome. What? Whew. You can just feel the rage coming off of Rhino with that gore. And while that gore is not going to win him the match directly in terms of a pin, but what it does is so important, Taz, because it sets things up, takes the wind away from RVD. Kind of broke his ribs, and now look at this. And it enables Rhino to toss well, trash cans, lids into the ring that he can use as a weapon to open up Van Damme. If he would have connected with that trash can, it definitely might have split the man open. Oh, nice. Belly to belly suplex. Or just planted him in the back of Van Damme's head. Crashed to the canvas. Van Damme, you, you, you can see, usually he would try and throw some striking blows like that as the man's trying to pull him up by his hair. And, Rhino again able to shut down Rob Van Dam. Takes the shortcut, breaking the eyes of Van Dam, and well, he took away what? his win earlier. You're gonna try and take away his vision now. Hold you, man. It's it's about desperation. Desperation for Rhino. Talked about it right at the outset. Desperate times, desperate measures. We're seeing it in the first blood match as the war machine. That trash can, he's got a wedge stacked in between the top and the middle ropes, but Van Damme tries to fight back. Rhino puts on the brakes oh, and wow. just takes him high into the air, drives him down back first to the mat. Impressive high angle spine buster. And both these men, I mean, you basically heard Dream and touch on it earlier. I, of such a long history, a long friendship for years upon years. And that is just out the window. Comes down for Rhino, his family, his child. It's about making a living, keeping his career. I don't blame the guy. I don't. He's got to do what he's got to do to support his family. Oh! Van Dam, what a, just that kick right in the face. I don't think Rhino saw that one coming. Ah, oh, it was so quick. Rob snaps those kicks, kicks off so quick. You, can, you can't block him. You can't stop him. Twisting leg drop. Well, I got him right across. I'm going to check Rhino's nose. I thought maybe his nose was bleeding, but I guess not. With Rhino down, RVD going to grab that trash can lid. The weapons that Rhino introduced into this match. And that's, again, just to reiterate, folks, that's all legal. First blood rules. In this one-on-one -on -one matchup, you bleed, you lose, and shots in the corner with the right hands by Van Dam. Yeah, you don't want to let Van Dam get that striking going. He will wear you out. Look at Rob. Look at that balance. Wow. Amazing athleticism. Are you kidding me or what? And I don't even think Van Dam had his complete balance. And he's and still, he's still connected, connected with great impact, didn't he? I'm telling you. When that guy kicks you off the ropes, it feels like he got shot with a shotgun. Trust me. Now, lower body strength, flexibility. Five star. Five star frog Good splash God. on display from RVD. Well, that's not going to make you bleed, but then again, maybe it could. You could get some internal bleeding and spit up. Very smart, very smart by the former TNA world champion. 
And even though Rhino isn't bleeding, takes the air away from him, takes the wind away as Van Dam came off the top right across the midsection. And now RVD going to try and use that trash can to open up Rhino. I think Rhino's in grave danger. Oh, my God. Oh, God! Left himself wide open. You look at the dictionary on the low blows, and that was it. Nothing subtle there. Again, all legal. That was a straight punch to the old area. Oof. And a wow. kick and a oh, oh, and it's God, DDT nasty. where he just spiked him. Oh, my him. God. Stacked him up. Dropped him right on his head and neck. See Van Dam's Wasn't neck. pretty. Just, oh. No. Van Dam is... Guys are shutty. Not much moving. Let's take another look here at this impactful, watch nasty this, DDT. Watch this. Oh, my God. Look at that. Rhino displays the trash can lid that he's going to use to try and open up RVD and win this first blood match. Going to get Van Dam back up to his feet. Going to try and... Oh, yeah, well, uh, is he going to go pile driver he might, here? He might be thinking of pile driver on that trash can lid, which would be a good opportunity to split open the man's head. Oh, my God. Watch How about out. Van Dam? Again, the balance, the quickness. Watch out. Oh! Version of a Van Daminator right there, I believe. Happened so quick. Trash can lid right in the face of Rhino and referee checking to see if the war machine's been opened up and apparently not. Nope, Andrew Thomas says no, match continues. Well, I've seen, I've been on the other end of a Van Daminator with a steel chair in hand which meets your face in a very lovely way. Speaking of faces and steel, how about that? Right now, just jamming up. Van Dam just jamming up the trash can lid. Up against Rhino. Oh, he's buddy. Got, he's got the oh, whole trash can. Buddy. He's got the whole trash can wedge you, between the ropes. You know what it is now. Is he going to go coast to coast? I think Rob might be thinking a little Van Terminator action. Oh, my oh. God. Good night, Irene. Is that going to be the move that opens up Rhino? I, oh, oh, my oh, my God. oh, my God. Rob Van Dam. Wow. Wow. Two former really tight friends beating the daylights out of each other. First blood match. Wow. Rob Van Dam gets the victory. Boy, was that physical. You are not kidding. Right from the opening bell. And RVD wins the first blood match. Goes coast to coast with the Van Terminator into the trash can. And you gotta wonder about the status of Rhino right now with, with Bischoff and Hogan I really don't know, but I know I'm taking a look here at the Van Terminator. That right there split the man open. A quick just the power, the force of those powerful legs of Van Dam. Crushing the trash can against the skull of Rhino is enough to split the man open. Post-match celebration. RVD soaking in the applause from the Impact Zone crowd as we send it to Christy Hemme with Immortals Kazarian. Coming up next on Final Resolution, it is AJ Styles versus former Fortune member Douglas Williams. Now, Kazarian, how do you, what are your thoughts about somebody who has completely betrayed Fortune going against your one of your best friends, AJ Styles? You want my thoughts? Let me give you my thoughts on AJ Styles, the only Grand Slam champion in the history of TNA. A man who since day one, Christy, has carried this company on his back through good times and through bad. And a man who tonight continues to lay a path of dominance courtesy of fortune. Now you want my thoughts? You want my thoughts on Doug Williams? Here they are. One of the best wrestlers in the world, hands down. But if you think that Benedict Arnold was a traitor, Christy, if you think LeBron James was a traitor, this little English schoolgirl has them both beat. Because you see, he had a chance to be a part of something bigger than he could possibly imagine. And he turned his back on us. So my thoughts, here they are. Styles clash. One, two, three. And then I think AJ Styles takes the Union Jack flag and sticks it right up Doug Williams' ass and sends him back to that godforsaken rock from which he came. And I think that's 
worth a fortune. Thank you very much, Christy. And ladies and gentlemen, up next, it's a former member of Immortal. Branded a traitor by Kazarian, has a chance to make a huge impact in this TV title bout tonight at Final Res. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the TNA World Television Championship. Introducing, first of all, the challenger representing the United Kingdom, Douglas Williams. Oh, Doug Williams got some uh, fancy golf there in that crazy looking flop jacket. Isn't that the family crest? How big of the crest? Challenger for the TNA TV Championship, Douglas Williams, here comes the champ. And now, introducing his opponent, representing Fortin from Gainesville, Georgia. Weighing in at 225 pounds, he is the TNA World Television Champion, the phenomenal AJ as he laid out what was going to happen in this AJ Styles Douglas Williams matchup. Yeah, Kazarian knows, knows firsthand about Douglas Williams. He felt the impact of that rolling chaos theory suplex this past Thursday on Impact. Just an amazing throw, amazing finishing maneuver that Douglas Williams possesses. That rolling chaos is just sick. And right there is the phenomenal one, man. He's all about fortune. He's all about it. I'll tell you, you're a hand pick. You are hand pick from the nature boy Ric Flair. How incredible are you? That's a exactly much more incredible than that. That's who AJ Styles. The greatest wrestler of all time. Yep. Hand pick AJ. And each member of Fortune after. And Douglas Williams, he was part of that elite group. But, you know, he made a, a decision, and now he's on the other side of the fence. That's what it's all about right there, the TNA Television Championship. Displayed by our referee, Brian Hebner. That TV Championship belt goes to the winner tonight. We talked about the rolling chaos theory suplex of Douglas Williams. But if you think about it, in terms of champion and challenger, two of the coolest finishing moves in professional wrestling. Oh, AJ's got the style clash. Style clash, yep. And rolling chaos, and I'll tell you, I mean, in my opinion, this is a, this is a purest dream match to see these two men about to hook up and go. I'm a fan of both both of these men, both of their abilities in the ring as pro wrestlers. And I want to get your insight, Taz, in terms of contrast in styles between now, Williams and AJ. Oh, look, Douglas Williams, he's a mat-type wrestler. He's going to grind you on the mat. He's going to try and hook a limb and, and, and just stretch it apart and pull it apart. Where AJ, he's more of that just amazing athlete that will fly around that ring. He's got an amazing vertical leap and will throw caution at the wind to do anything to hurt you. That's what AJ will do. But he can, AJ's just got amazing balance, his quickness, his speed, his endurance. He's a complete package. Big match experience edge in terms of title bouts. Would have to go to AJ Styles. No doubt, no doubt on that. Even though Douglas Williams, a former X Division champion, but in terms of all the title matches that AJ has had throughout his eight plus years, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, you're supposed to be a professor, right? That's what I heard. But, you know, listen, that's the rumor. AJ Styles, the longest reigning TNA World Champion of all time. You are correct, sir. That's not a bad stat to have in your corner. Also heard Kazarian talk about in terms of credentials and resume. That oh, AJ, a Grand Slam champ, holding all the gold. He's held all the championship yep. belts. That's just so impressive, as was that side headlock takedown by Douglas Williams. Right there, that head scissors. Tremendous. Look at the pressure that AJ's putting on the head and throat. And Doug turns in. Is that to pop perfect, the head excellent. Perfect counter, and then with the exposed head of AJ oh, Styles cool. right there for the taking, why not? Take that front headlock, one of the most underrated holds in the world is a front headlock. You can choke a man out real quick with that hold. And even if you don't choke him out, you can certainly control it. You control the head, you control the body. That's it. 
from oh, Sunset. Sunset oh. flip, roll through, and AJ. Oh, from Styles. Oh, from yeah. Styles clip. Wasn't happy with rolling through into a pin. Didn't figure that he had Williams weakened sufficiently to get the three count, so he was going to try and keep rolling and hit the Styles mm. clash. But you read the lips of Williams, he just yes. said, no way, man. Well, that might have been a little cocky, shocking, on AJ's part to go for the Styles clash so early when you could show your opponent well, you know, let him feel what that hold is going to feel like when you go into the, the transition of the hold. I'm a little surprised AJ did that, but I'm sure AJ's got a, uh, a plan in mind. You hear our uh, live audience here is torn. Torn between two wrestlers. There you go. Well, AJ still has his supporters, even though the association with the moral most certainly cost him some of his fan base. I don't think AJ, we talked to AJ, he don't care about his fan base anymore. You know, he's about money, he's about fame and fortune. That's for sure. Pun intended. Ever since he came under the influence of the nature boy, Ric Flair. Can't argue when you're getting guidance from someone named Ric Flair. That's the guy you want to listen to. And right now, oh, dog. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Thought he was going for that rolling chaos. Whoa. And I think AJ did as well. And Perfectly scouted. He drops down and well, it's a leverage move. Williams out to the floor and AJ now pointing how proud he is. And there's the look on the face, that smile, the cocky attitude of AJ. Well, you know, chess game right here, right? Who's trying to up right. the other? You know, that, that's what's going on here. Both these guys are in their prime. They know what they bring to the dance. And neither man, neither man is taking a big risk early on in this match, and that's smart by both of them for the TV title. Strikes by Stein, a little answered, first by the right hand and then the European uppercut, and that's what Williams is so famous for, notorious for those uppercut shots, and AJ is able to out quick Williams in the corner, but then dug right there, elevates him, out to the apron, and caught Styles with the knee. Well, just, to, just as you say, AJ is going to out quick him, Williams was just as quick, if not one step ahead of Styles. Look at AJ, I'm sorry, look at that, Douglas Williams, what is this? Oh, a heel You don't see that much out of him. Wow, Douglas Williams. Running off the apron. I did that move once. Once. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I don't think AJ expected Douglas Williams to, to pull that out off the apron. You know, there's that, uh, there's that big time dislike from the members of fortune towards Douglas Williams. They never felt like Douglas was part of, you know, there was five of them. They were from the start. Yeah, there's five of them, they were holding up four fingers. And there was beer money and Tazarian and AJ, where Douglas was kind of just... They were almost like icing him out, were yeah, they? Yeah, they sure were. Here we go. Challenger gets barely a one count before Styles uses his leg strength to power out. And AJ trying to clear the cobwebs as Williams goes right back to the offense. Caught him in the side of the head. And Douglas Williams, he just has that prototypical rugged British pro wrestling style. You know what I mean? That that smash mount. You know that that UK style. Back to the days of Billy Robinson. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm with you. So many great ooh, European wrestlers. Modern day era too. Williams gets it rolling. Offense on the side of the challenger. Knee to the chest. Style shot out to the middle of the ring to give him a little distance. And Williams goes, well, high risk, and we don't uh -oh, see that uh -oh. from Williams very often. Ah, and he came back to haunt. Uh, that's why you don't see Williams do it much, because he don't do it good. No, I don't think Douglas Williams should have should have went off the game plan. He did the heel early. Okay, that was cool. and hit. It worked. But that right there did not. Whatever Williams was thinking to go up to do off the top, AJ cut him off with the pet. Yeah, did not have the champ sufficiently taken down and beaten to catch him off guard with a move like that. And now Williams yeah, pays right the, the price. Look at the neck. Exposed to the back of the neck, the upper spine. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Moonsault right into the back of the man's skull and yeah, neck. With all of his body oh weight God, I don't think crashing I've ever seen right that there. Duck. I don't think I've ever Roll seen him. Watch this. Roll him over. Hook the leg and get two only. I don't think I've ever seen anybody moonsault, springboard from the second rope onto the back of someone's neck and upper spinal cord area. Yeah, where he's just draped over the ropes and just defenseless at that point. Williams back the uppercuts and then the headbutt, also notorious for that. 
Look at that leap fall. Look at that. Look at that smooth age. Look at that. Oh my God. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you don't realize how hard it is to do what that guy just did in about six seconds. Poetry in motion. That leap frog, that quick drop down. Punctuated by the drop kick and then the pin for two. Into that amazing explosive drop kick. The core of AJ, how strong is the middle of his body? When he extends with that drop kick, that's where he gets the power. It's not his legs. It's the middle of his body when he explodes into that drop kick. You see those legs extend, as Taz said. You watch AJ's midsection. Yes. The muscularity as he connects with that kick, it's a thing of beauty. It really is. It's just, he's a gifted athlete. AJ is gifted and he knows he is. I mean, you run around with the moniker, the phenomenal one, you better back it up, and he does. Every time he's in the ring. Love Immortal, love Fortune, or hate him, you appreciate the in-ring. Well, Ric Flair's gonna surround himself. He's gonna surround himself around the men that he thinks are it. And that's you know, Beer Money Kazarian and AJ. But right now, Douglas Williams blocking that vertical suplex attempt. No luck with the snap suplex from Styles. Williams fights back from outside and oh. AJ's timing was perfect right there because Williams was coming back into the ring. Wow, he's hung up now. Look at this. Left That's himself he... wide open, and now AJ going to try and take oh advantage of the knee. Try. He is. AJ just really stomping all over the right knee. He's trapped. It's like he's in a bear trap. Douglas Williams can't get out. And you can see, look at, look at AJ's face. You saw that grin. He knows he's got. Douglas Williams, right where he wants him. He's got that, that yeah. poop-eaten grin on his face. Yeah, he sure does. And <laughs> with Williams weakened out at this point, you see the level of confidence just rising in Styles. Well, you're right. You're right, Mike. You can definitely sense the confidence. And now look at this. They get not. Taking Douglas Williams to school. Page right out of the Nature Boy, Ric Flair's book. What better move to follow up? in terms of putting pressure on the already injured knee of Douglas Williams than the figure four, four. yeah. That is such a painful, painful move. You know, it's, it's, we've seen so many men do it over the years. What, about, what, what about a counter for Williams right here? Get, that, turn, bo get turn, that body, turn, turn, get that yep. body weight rolling, get that momentum on your side and turn him around. And yeah, that's like that. It's been looking at AJ. Again, that's the flexibility and strength of AJ. He's, these men, the ref's gonna have to unlock their legs. Oh, oh God, that's going on. Tear a ligament in your knee. Well, oh, he turned it, look at it. Something else that I don't know that I've seen before, that they went right out while they're still stuck in the figure four leg lock, out on the, on the floor? Yeah, but it looked like when they ended up on the floor, they ended up on their stomachs, which gave the advantage to Douglas Williams. Physical match. Super competitive. Oh, I love it. I love this. Look at that. AJ, what's he going to do? He's got a single leg. He's hooking that leg. And that headbutt to the gut. That always slow you down. We're getting that European style. And yeah, it's uppercut headbutt, uppercut headbutt. Follow clothesline. And then the point of the elbow right to the chest. And every time AJ gets to his feet, Williams has something for him. Elevated over. AJ lands on his feet. Oh, that, Taz. Nice. You got to appreciate that. Oh, yeah. I did that a couple times. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch this. Both legs got him stacked up for two. That's that high collar. It's a high collar throw. I mean, a high collar suplex where you hook around the men's, the man's head and neck. And uh, I used to kind of go under the crotch with my other leg hand. Uh, Douglas did a little bit different, but a nice suplex. Got him neutralized with the cravat. And at the same time, he drives the knees into the head and face. Off the ropes with a big time knee lift, and as AJ goes to the corner, Williams follows up immediately. He's directly on him, gonna try and shoot him across. AJ's got yeah, well, other intentions. We're at that point in the match here, Mike, where it's, it's gonna come down, in my opinion, to who's got more cardio from a cardiovascular standpoint. Look at that elbow. There we go. Challenge new TV high. champ. Oh, almost a new TV champ. This is, uh, we're in the fourth quarter right here, folks, so. <laughs> You gotta suck it up right now. Gotta suck it up. These guys have not stopped. Cardiovascular conditioning. I guess we'd give the slight edge to AJ. Yeah, I would think so. AJ's a little bit lighter in body weight than Douglas. 
think through the years, AJ has been in you know, so many more long matches than Williams. So just based off that alone, and Williams going to try and well, maybe go for that that suplex instead. AJ's got answers for it. Elbows right into the oh ear. My God. Oh my wow. God! Watch this! Watch this! That's it. Right DDT. He got him. I'm amazed that Williams kicked out. Uh, it's happened so quick. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was so quick. It's a moonsault into an inverted DDT. Oh, was right? it? <laughs> I'll make sure I get it right. That thing just whipped right by. And in the process, Williams gets dropped right on top of his head. Literally on top yep. of his head. AJ back to the figure four. Williams going to roll him up. One, two, let's go. Oh. That's the Matt wrestler. Played possible a little bit, then Williams. Oh, man, he just hit a big right hand, overhand right. Knockout blow by AJ sends Williams to the mat. Could be the, the strike that enables Styles to put the challenger away, but no, Williams has got fight from his knees. That's that tough brick. That tough brick, Douglas Williams. The rugged SOB, man. And he's bad mouthing AJ at the same time, almost like I love just, that. Yeah, I just love saying, it. bring it, bring it, bring it. Pele. That'll buy it. Oh, man. Well, Douglas wanted it, and he got it. Pele connects, and maybe fortunately, for Douglas Williams, the challenger, the, the right. impact of the ball was so strong that Williams gets knocked out, and AJ's not able to go uh -oh. for an immediate pin. AJ's stalking, stalking. It to him. Went slingshot. Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no. First, he goes into the guardrail, and then he takes him over with no, that rolling chaos out on the floor. I've never seen that either of you. No. They're outside the ring. Listen, listen, let me tell you, the impact alone from a German suplex is nasty. Nevertheless, a rolling chaos when you're getting all that momentum going. Let's take a look at this. To, we got to. This is a rolling chaos suplex on the outside. Watch the impact. Boom! Stuck him. He just stuck AJ with that right in the back of his head and spine. AJ's toast. Williams rolls in. AJ outside and on the verge of being counted out, Brian Hebner up to eight. It's a small miracle, age is moving. Styles rolls in, barely beats the count. Shows how important that TV title is to AJ Styles. A weakened AJ. Williams looks around. Oh wait, he's mocking, mocking AJ. Is he gonna try and go for AJ's own move? No! Styles clash, he hit it on AJ. Are you kidding? Over. No Get way. Two. No champ, and he beat him with his own move. The winner of the match, and new TNA World Television Champion, Douglas Williams. What a slap in the face. AJ doesn't only lose his TV title, Douglas Williams, but as you said, Mike, he loses with his own move. Got to take another look at the move to gain the TNA TV title for Douglas Williams. Here's the clap. Stars class, but what happened before that was that rolling chaos very suplex on the outside of the ring. But God, what a kick in the you know what. They get uh, beat with your own move and your title. And think of this, Immortal loses gold. Oh, and a, they not only lose point. the title, but they lose it to a former Immortal member in Douglas Williams who becomes TNA Television Champion. We're going to send it to Christy Heaven standing by with Generation Me. We've got full metal mayhem still to come. Max, Jeremy, can I, just a few words. You guys are on your way to the ring right now. Huge opportunity, TNA Tag Team Champions against the Motor City Machine Guns. Yeah, we know that. And well, tonight, our TNA careers come full circle, you know? We started wrestling that team and we're gonna end it tonight, wrestling that team and winning those championship belts. You know, but it's not just about championship belts, Christy. It's not about tables, it's not just about ladders or chairs. Tonight is the end of a blood feud. Tonight is the end of a career of those 30-year-old video game playing dorks, the Motor City Machine Guns. By the hands of Jeremy Buck and Max Buck, at the end of the day, Christy, it's all about me. Let's get out of here. <laughs> well, good luck. Hey, we don't need <laughs> Coming up next, Generation Me. Christy Hemi, Generation Me, set the stage for what's up next tonight at Final Resolution. TNA World Tag Team titles on the line, and 
It's time to break down the preview. Here come the taglines for this next matchup. For Max, for Jeremy Buck, well, nothing going to be handed to them. Bucks aren't going to steal the title belts like they've done before. They've got to defeat Saban and Shelley. They've got to earn the gold. We saw recently on Reaction, Motor City Machine Guns, Jen Me, they battled Empty Arena, a fight as physical and brutal as anything we've seen from these two teams. No refs, no fans, but it was one hell of a war. Best way for these teams to settle their issues, it happens tonight. Incredible, high-risk offenses of both the guns and Generation Me. They're gonna be showcased at their finest tonight. It's ladders, it's chairs, it's tables and more. They're all legal. Time for Full Metal Mayhem. The following contest is Full Metal Mayhem for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. Introducing, first of all, the challengers, the team of Max and Jeremy. Generation Me! So the question is, is it Jen Me's time? Is this, is this it? Is this the opportunity that I hit? Are they going to be crowned new World Tag Team Champions right here in the ever dangerous Full Metal Man, baby? Oh, you think about Generation Me style? Could they really have a better chance no. for Full Metal Mayhem to, to showcase their abilities here and, in the process, become TNA World Tag Team Champions for the very first time? Which makes this matchup so cool. It's not only right up the challenges alley, but it's right up the champions. Their alley. This is their style, and here they come. And now, introducing uh, their opponents from Detroit, Michigan. They are the TNA World Tag Team. No warming up in a bullpen. Close enough, JB. We know it's the guns. Saban and Shelly flying down the ramp to initiate the contact. The TNA World Tag Team Championship belts, ladies and gentlemen, they hang high above the ring. So while the tables, the chairs, the ladders, that's all legal to use in this match. The point, eventually, is to get those TNA Tag Team title belts down, take possession, they're hung yeah. above the ring, take them down, win the titles, win the match. Right yeah, well, you gotta beat down your opponent enough to you know, have the ability to get one of those ladders in there and try and climb up and grab the Tag Team titles. Looks like Alex Shelley's gonna be in a bad way here real soon. Maybe not. Oh, my God! God, saving that. Oh! Wow, how about Jeremy Buck? So quick, so quickly. I couldn't really tell what Jeremy hit after he... Let's take a replay. We're going to get another angle of this here. Like this split screen. Oh, the moonsault. Wow. Just awesome. How yeah. quick. First he caught Saban inside, then Shelly outside, and now Max Buck goes to the mount. Raining in those right hands to the top of the head of Saban. Got communication between the challengers. Jen Me, Max, and Jeremy as Jeremy outside directs traffic. Got the table in position and in well, place. Look, the you know champions, Motor City Machine Guns came out here like a house of, on fire, and uh, Jen Me shut them down real quick. Are you surprised at that? Not in the least. After what we saw Taz recently on Reaction, the empty arena matchup between these two, nothing oh that these two tag teams that they do will surprise me in a double team move leads to Saban getting dropped on his head with the DDT. Well, we've seen neck issues for Saban and Shelly at the hands of Max and Jeremy Buck. It looks like they're zoning right in to Saban's neck again. Wait a minute. Wow, oh my God. What a great camera shot we had there. On top of, oh, my God, just turned Jeremy Buck inside out. Did so by the Saban clothesline, and then Chris gets it rolling with a drop kick. Shelly holds Max, and Saban just drilled him with the kick. Chance now for the guns to turn this matchup in their favor. Saw some communication, some eye contact made between Saban and Shelly. One would suspect well, that's, they've got something in store here for Jen Me. Exactly, Mike and Tech. Oh my God, tag teams will do that. They don't have to talk. When you mm -hmm. work with each other so much and you have that chemistry, a certain look will let your partner know, let's do this. And but could, it didn't work. Could <laughs> you have better chemistry than, well, two brothers right. fighting against a tag team that's been together like five, six years? Uh, no, 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 no. You could not have better chemistry, but well, Jeremy put the brakes on, almost hit that steel chair. Oh. Good 
Shelly Sims, his own partner, saving into the corner and then flies right up his back. Contact made oh, look out to the oh, chair. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. Wow. Jeremy Buck just flinging the chair. Oh. Catches saving and then Shelly gets caught with the kick and a drop oh, kick geez. running style. Just hit that steel chair. Yeah. Oh. Look out on the outside, you can see Max Buck look like he started to loosen the hinges on that ladder. Gonna bring that thing in the ring. You could tell he had that what he had on his mind. Yeah, sort of surveying the situation, making sure that both members of the guns were down and out so that Jen Me can pull that ladder into place, climb up, and well, I guess they weren't so down and out. Yeah, they should have slid that thing in there underneath. Go to the machine guns. Yeah, they, they definitely leveled the playing field real quick. <laughs> the double drop kick into the ladder drops Jen Me and well, I don't think that, I don't think Shelly realizes that steel chair. They don't see, they slid the chair and Shelly, Saban, they never saw it. God. Well, he felt it. He might not have saw it, but Saban felt oh. it. Oh, my God, and so did Shelly. Blow a knee out. Good Lord. Good God, that was ugly. The level of physicality that we saw between these two teams in the empty arena match is being matched Well, tonight. the hatred, the hatred, Mike. Sure. The hatred, the disdain, the dislike. For each other you, you remember the audio of that empty arena match where you could just hear all four competitors throughout yep yeah it was nasty and right now shelly's got to go out it alone a little bit here the ladder in ring and both guns and one i'm sorry both jen me and one gun shelly gonna go slice bread on the ladder no success for oh my god, oh my god. Oh. max Oh, just takes him and throws him back first in the oh, ladder. No, 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 no. Jeremy's got him in his sight. What the hell is he going to do here? That's what he's going to do. Oh, my God. Wow. Not a fun way to spend a Sunday night. All the way of Jeremy Buck, in addition to the ladder. We're going to get new champs here, buddy. Across the chest. We're going to get new champs here, Mike. Here goes. Ladder put into play right underneath the championship belts. Saving outside. Shelly being oh, neutralized it. by Max. Here goes Jeremy. They did it. Gonna climb up and take down the titles. And Gotta go high. Those things are up there. Oh, they put the ladder too far. They don't have the ladder directly underneath, do they? No, they don't. It's gotta reach back and look out. Leaves yourself wide open for this. Saving <laughs> by any means necessary. Well, it was got... desperation, but it paid off. No doubt. Just pull it right off that ladder. Oh, look at this. What's going to happen now? Well, a little stair step, head scissors, and Jeremy first the shot to the back of Saban and then out to the floor for Shelly. Again, Jen Mee senses the time's right. Yeah, you got You know, when the opportunity's there, you got to get up that ladder. Put the ladder underneath the title, man. Yeah, it looks like he's a little bit he's off again. Off. Yeah, he's just he's stepping one step at a time like he's five years old. What's that about? He's trying to make. Oh, hold on. I don't think. I don't know if he would get up there if he was on the top row. That, those belts are high up there, Mike. That's a good point. I don't. And you know, you, you, you're talking about more or less X Division style athletes here. They're not at. Oh, the oh. dragon screw. Wow, he's wrapped up in the ladder. Well, that just adds to something else that we've never seen tonight. How many times have we said that? About half a dozen times? Yeah, it's an awesome show thus far. This is an awesome match for the tag team titles. My point was, I think that it seems like those tag team titles are really way up there. I don't know if that lad is tall enough. And you're talking about more or less, these are X Division athletes are not exactly gigantic in height themselves. That's coming from me. Good point. Oh, thank you. Sandwiched in the ladder. Ooh. Oh, double foot stomp. Oh. Jeremy just oh, man. totally defenseless. Holy this steel ladder sandwich. As with Max in the ladder, Jeremy oh. gets elevated over by Shelly right on top of his brother. Bulldog oh, now. Oh, face God. jam style bulldog by Saban. Look oh. at Max Buck. Look at that. All of a sudden, the match, which Looks like was he's in a crab trap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, we had a shark cage earlier, now a crab trap. It's an ocean theme. Matornik. Matornik, that too. Close enough. Here goes Saban, speeding up the ladder. And I, think the, I think the ladder positioning is a little better yeah, this time, but I'm still not certain like you are. 
the, the, yeah, the, I, I don't know. And you can't go to that tippy top wrong because oh, oh my God. God. If you go to that, you know, that tippy, the top, top of the ladder, anybody who owns a ladder has climbed one, which is probably mostly out there, you know that you can't stand on the tippy, tippy top. Well, you don't have any balance up there. You have no balance. Chris Saban really crashed and burned, and now they can turn their attention, Jen Me, to Alex Shelley. Saban down, and Matt's gonna take him up. Gonna put Saban there, but oh, quickly oh, Saban just comes God. right back with the Ooh, kick. Man, that was ugly. Ooh, that was just intense. First of speed and offense. And well, he lost his balance, did Max. Max Buck, he slipped and he's caught up in a tree of woe there, but Shelley right above him. Saving into play with the steel chair. What the hell is this? This is not going to be a basic guy. Uh, oh. oh man, he's Max Buck is trapped. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Hesitation dropkick. I'll get a spatula for Max Buck. He's done. Guns feel like they've reached that point here. What are they doing now? Well, they've got they got Jen Me both down. I guess they're not convinced that they're totally down and out yet. Max oh, and you Jeremy. Could just, you could just sense, Mike. Okay. Under the ladder, they stack oh chairs on top of it. What the hell is Shelly going to do now? Seen anything like this? Oh my God. Double foot stomp off the top. How much pain are both those young men in right now? Good Lord! Incredible display of both physicality and high-risk wrestling offense from uh, these two listen, teams in Full Metal Mayhem. That was damn near criminal. What are you kidding me? But it's the way they combine the physicality and the high risk. Well, now it looks like the Motor City Machine Guns are going to try and get up there to retain their tag team titles. Save it. Kind of just guarding Alex Shelley. That, that ladder don't look too stable right now. Boy, I like this game plan. Oh, there he goes. He's close to that. He's close, but he can't again, stand up. He's worried. He can't balance. I think the guns. Wait, what now? I think maybe they reached the conclusion that well, you did a little bit earlier. Hold on. Yeah, well, they're too high, the belts. But I think these ladders are all the same height. I don't know why they're bringing more in. That's a good point. Oh, got three ladders now in the ring. Two members of Jen Me down, and two members of the guns. What the hell are these who... guys doing? Well, they're positioning the three ladders, and Saban gonna go and climb up and yeah, but you still can't get in that tippy top top row. Now all four men, or three at least. Well, here comes Max. All racing up these three ladders. And all four men fighting up at the top, and you talk about a dangerous situation. Oh. Well, there goes Jeremy Buck. Now Shelly's out. That well, it looks like Saban's Saban. got more balance. Saban and Max Buck. Max reaches up to try and make contact with the belts, but no luck. Jeremy Buck with the kick for Saban. Steel chair comes into play, but Saban takes it away from, from Jeremy. Doubles him over with the shot to the gut. I'd have just saved his partner's life, did Saban. Steel chair slid by Saban to his partner, Shelly. Oh. How do they think of this stuff? Resolution showing their appreciation for these two tag teams battling for the TNA World Tag Team titles. What's with the three ladders? I mean, they, they need either of them. How are they gonna. You know what I'm saying? Uh -oh. Stick around, Taz. Let's see what they've got in store. Well, there's definitely a game plan in the whacked out, twisted, sick, demented minds of the Motor City Machine Guns. What are they gonna do with the table? If you stand on the table, know. there's still this. Oh, I know what they're doing. It. 
They're gonna top. So you can oh, stand balance. on the top the balance. Yeah, you can stand on top of the top of the, the tippy top of the ladder. Now, add one more thing we've never seen before. Oh, you can just sense something bad is gonna happen shortly. That that contraption is not good. <laughs> Low blow, courtesy of Jeremy Buck, takes Shelly out to the floor, oh, and then man. the kick. Paste it, paste it with that saving. Oh boy. Look at that. Springboard cross body. Amazing athletes. All four of these guys, amazing. Saw the close up look of Saban slapping the life back into his face. And now Chris rolls into the ring. Well, Saban. Saban, if he can get up there, he's going to get his hands sure. on those tag team titles and retain. So now, got, well, hold on. How do you climb now, Mike, to get over the table? You know what I mean? Like, I, just, you... I just figured out that they, they finally put the table there. I haven't gotten to that point well, yet. Well, you're not that sharp. But, yeah, I'm just saying, how do you how do you, <laughs> how do you get over? You look, I mean? look, you gave me 19 minutes on construction of the shark cage earlier. The least you can I'm do is tell me about the construction of this. I can't help you. This is a crazy contraption. I don't know what these guys are doing. I don't suggest any painters that paint the sides of buildings using this type of scaffolding system. Well, construction tips continue from Bob Vila as... We're laughing, and these four guys are putting their life on the line for the tag team titles right now. And oh, oh wow! God. Steel yeah, chair you. just slid across the table into Saban. That was very clever by Jeremy. Sure was. Right in his face, Max Buck. Max looking around, and so are we. We're trying to find out where Jeremy is. Oh, oh man, what a shot. Watch out. Ooh. Shelly catches. Max with that elbow. Slice thread it off the apron through a table. My God, that was awesome. That opens it up for Chris Saban. And Max Buck to potentially decide this and take down the title belts. Well, both Max Buck, Saban, steel chairs in hand, tag team titles hung above this wacky contraption that the Motor City Machine Guns built. Similar strategy. Oh, yeah, here we go. Both champ and challenger. Here we go. To this role. You talk about a high, high wire situation with the belts hanging in the balance. This is dangerous up you here. You can't tags. move your feet. You can't move. And the title belt swinging between them at the same the vibration, time. The vibration, the vibration. Max, Max got the chair knocked out of his hand. Oh. Saving cracks him across the cracker. Oh my God! Saving, take him down. Keep the goal. Can Saving do it? Yes. Guns oh, retain oh, oh, oh. the title. Go for the match. <laughs> that was impressive. That was just nuts. If these men just fall for them, putting their bodies at risk. Saban, the side of his head is split open. The guns retain the tag team titles. You think, you think there's any way that we can have the truck put together a highlight reel? Well, Ask and you shall receive. There you go, Taz. I was just, just right there. You saw that was at the top of the match. How did the generation mean that makes me were in charge of this thing? They were just one step ahead of the champions. And the early goals of this match and the physicality just did not stop throughout this whole thing.
Jen Mee looked great. They have nothing to be ashamed of. They lost here. But it was the, the key to me was the physicality of this match, combined with the incredible high-risk offense of these two teams. Hesitation, drop kick by Saban. Well, turned it momentarily in the gun's favor. It's also, Mike, I think it's, you got to you gotta kind of compliment all four of these guys for being innovative, for it's thinking great. different, thinking of different ways to injure and harm your opponent. I mean, uh, your opponent, I'm sorry. And, 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 and we saw that here. Four and four. Oh, God. Oh, God. Chair shot to the back. Max goes through the table. Openings now. Take down the titles as Chris Saban does. And the guns have done it. That was good stuff. Congratulations to the Motor City Machine Guns. Beer money. Now number one contenders to That's the guns. Right. Give them some knocks down. Good job, man. Derek Bischoff, what's he doing out here? Oh, oh, man. Oh, my God. It's his brother. Hits him from behind and feeds him to the big bad wolf. Because of the payoff, you turn on your brother, you turn on your own blood like that. A mortal has taken over. There is nothing or nobody that we can't buy. You know, there's an old saying that everybody, every man has his price. Well, I guess Eric Bischoff, I guess Immortal, I guess Abyss, all of them got in on it, man. And they had the right price for my very own brother to sell out on me, man. Pope just making this thing extremely personal. I've never seen the Pope like this, Mike. I, I've never seen him to this level of intensity and rage. I have done nothing to the Pope yet compared to what I'm going to do to him coming up. You got to remember. You are talking to one of the sickest, most demented people in all of pro wrestling. Abyss, one-on-one -on -one against the Pope D'Angelo De Niro, the casket match at Final Resolution. I'm gonna do exactly what Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff told me to do as an elite member of Immortal. And that is to execute the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. Pope has yet to finish business with the Monster Abyss, because I am, without a shadow of doubt, the TNA Monster Killer. You got that, Daddy? Who will be put six feet under when the Monster Abyss takes on the Pope D'Angelo De Niro in a casket match? The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is a casket match. Introducing, first of all, about to make his way to the ring, weighing in excess of 350 pounds, the monster of Free match video package. Abyss labeled himself the sickest and the most demented. Probably not going to get an argument from either Taz or I, but boy, in terms of having a match that's right up your alley, sort of your specialty match. I think this is a business style. This is his type. It's casket match rules. Beat your opponent down to the point that you can not only put him in the casket, but then close the lid down, well, and that ensures the victory. I mean, Immortal obviously making sure that, uh, you know, putting Abyss in his realm. And, you know, listen, in my view, there's nothing wrong with that. Take care of yours. Take care of your family. Take care of your people. That's obviously what the uh, what Immortal's doing and Big Sean's doing, not in my view, for this. Well, they took care of Pope's family back at Turning Point, aren't they? Yeah, they sure did. A little greasy of the old bomb. Hey, the almighty dollar. But I mean, come on. His, cousin, of his cousins and his old brother? Hey, maybe they needed the coin. Who knows? The tough economy. Yeah. Got a lot of problems. <laughs> Money ain't one of them. And now, introducing his opponent. From Harlem, New York, weighing in at 232 pounds, the Pope D'Angelo Donero. Well, it's kind of a different looking Pope right there. And I had a lot of opportunity to have a conversation with the Pope earlier today. And I bet you told me, he goes, Dad, here's the deal. Plain and simple, I'm going into a war here. I'm geared up for war. That's what he said. 
Yeah. He's ready for war. He looks like he looks sure ready does. to go. Well, you watch the body language of D'Angelo De Niro. You watch the Pope come down the ramp, and we know that the new regime has cut back on his money drop, but I don't even think that D'Angelo De Niro could care less about a money drop, about a special ring no, entrance. No, it's not about that. That look on the face of the Pope tells the entire story. Well, look, the Pope loves to have a good time and stuff like that, and he loves his congregation. But when it comes down to it, that's knuckle up time, and you know, you mess with his family, pay his family off or whatnot. I mean, that, that cuts deep. And that's some of the stuff that I got out of him earlier today, and he's, this is an extremely personal situation for the Pope. It kind of has a different demeanor than we normally see. Well, our live audience here calling uh, saying the Pope, he's a monster killer. Well, that remains to be seen. Let's see if he can do that. If he can chop down this big six foot eight, 350 pound monster. I know, I know why they were chanting monster killer, because it's on the back of his trunks. <laughs> That's why. There you go. <laughs> and with the team Whoa, officials oh, outside, oh, oh, oh. they open up that casket. Pope puts on the brakes just as about ready to go in. And as you pointed out, Mike, that's how you win the match. Again, not about pins or submission. Thrown in that casket, lid gets shut, you lose. And that casket has been such a part of the rivalry Whoa. between these two as he gets overpowered, does the Pope, and able to land on his feet, showing great agility. And now, gonna drag a miss out to the Arena 4. I'm not sure about the strategy here. Let's see if it takes yeah. off for it because to me, you get out on the arena floor, you get things like steel steps and steel ring posts and steel guardrails involved. I think it's advantage of this. Yeah, I agree, but uh, I agree, but I disagree. How's that? Because, um, yeah. Uh, you're right on the guardrail, aren't you? <laughs> no, because, I mean, yeah. listen, Pope is he's a street guy. Straddling the guardrail. He's, he's a street guy. He's from Harlem, and, and I've been over there, and it's about street. It's about fighting in the street, and that's what Pope said. He's in a war, so he's bringing it. He looks pretty good on the outside right now, does the Pope. He's doing great. Oh my God! Look at this. He's got a bit right go. there in the corner of the guardrail, and like just a, knee shot after knee back shot. And forth like he a, saw his head just banging off the guard. Kind of like a rock and sock oh, and robot. Awesome. Well, back in the yeah, 60s. Of course I do. Anyway, right now, Pope saying, "Open up the lid. Let's throw Big Abyss in this thing." But I mean, that's half the battle right there. Yeah, it sure is. Especially from the arena floor. I, I mean, I can see if you've got a miss in the ring, you've got a better opportunity true, to get true, him in the true. casket. Yeah, you have that. You have the, the height of the apron of the ring, the, the height of the actual ring. And, and, the, and the more you would beat down Abyss if he's down on the floor, then you've got to pick him up and put him in the casket. Yeah. Again, another reason. And he's so big as Abyss, to That's, your point. Yeah. Thank you. Another reason why I call that advantage Abyss in this casket match is the yeah, football goes airborne, just squashed him in the corner. Hope, man, he is just... He is really bringing it to the monster abyss. He leaves his feet, jumping face plant. Well, it seems like a different motivation for the Pope. He's focused more. He seems to be, he has more violence in mind. He, oh, he lost his footing a little bit, slipped because these ropes are, you know, people hit them, they're sweating on, you know, throughout whoa, the whoa, night. Whoa, 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 oh, God! God! God. Oh. Well, that all started because of that hesitation of Pope. That's it. Slipping. Let's Came take a look body. at this here. Look at that. This is going to be a tough landing. Oh. And that, that's... See the concern on the face of our yeah, officials. He, 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 Pope, Pope's got to have some... He had to hurt his back or his spine or something. Man, he, see the way he landed, Mike. You know, I mean, listen, I'll tell you, that, that's why, you know... You see, uh, like Pope's body, how thickly muscular built he is. I mean, that's that that's what you that's what that muscle's there for to protect sure. you. I mean, not getting thrown on top of a casket. You train to be a pro wrestler. You don't say, "Well, I'm gonna protect myself getting thrown on top no. of a casket." But you want to protect your body, and that's what muscle mass does. Pope back up to his feet in the corner. Abyss just waiting for him to turn around. Oh, oh 350 man. on the loose. Talk about a freight train. Mm. That's like a semi hitting you, man. Casket opens again, and at this point, just leave it open. They yeah. keep asking, just leave it open. They keep trying to, you know. Yeah, when you when you close it, it they can use it as a weapon. 
elbows to the side of the head, momentarily rocks a fist, and then the drop kick. Oh, there you go. He's in. Pullman's going to be in. Standing in the casket, immediately gets back up to the apron, and Pope is on him because the Pope right now with with some strikes oh, might be headbutt. Able. Don't headbutt that guy's head. Yeah, what's not he a fist he's there. This, just when we thought he got, might be yeah. able to get a fist in the casket, ah, the size of a fist's head, he's got a head like a freaking cash register. Huh? He's got a massive head. That's my point. And a weakened. Pope is, is brought back up to his feet by Abyss, and the monster just clubs him right across the back. Yeah, you can see the pain the Pope is in, and now he's got Abyss stalking him. No, when you're hurting like that, and you're on the mat, and you got your senses, but then you see the guy walk away, you go, okay, I got a room to breathe, I can maybe get up. When you see his pants, his boots, Right on you, you know, you know he's right there. You know something's about to land on, on your forearm, whatever. A stop. I don't miss those those no, nights. No <laughs> chance to get out of the way. Well, here's there one game go, plan. There you go. There you go. Climb right up on the back of the monster. Can't even get a good choke because the guy is so massive. Look how strong. Oh my God, so powerful. Ends up being driven down back first. Side slam by Abyss. So strong is the monster Abyss. I thought there was some of that strategy of De Niro that time. Climbing up the back of Abyss, trying to wear him down, but as you pointed out, just having no luck even locking on what was a choker, a sleeper, and now... Well, just dump him in. That's it. Well, the Pope's no, trying to fight out. Not so easy. Oh, look at those shots. Pope fights back from the apron. Oh, oh what a headbutt. Oh, that oh headbutt has really been the difference oh, that's maker. That's it! He's got to drop the lid. Pope, I'm sorry, uh, Abyss has to slam the lid. That's it. Slam the lid, win the match. But again, the headbutt, the difference here. Pope trying to fight back. No, no, stayed open. Stayed no open. stayed open. You can hear the referee's ruling. And De Niro from the casket caught him with the right and drove him back in. And now this gives, well, this gives life to, to the, the Pope. Pope. Yeah, props to the Pope. To get himself out of that casket. Whoa, whoa. Look at that flying that's, shoulder that's block. That's what you need, something like that. Flying shoulder block off the top, as Taz pointed out. Takes 350 up into the air. Takes him down, inverted atomic drop. Ooh, what a backhand. Well, that back, out of leg sweep, that clothesline. Dual move and yeah. dual, doubly effective. That back out of leg sweep, that's called an Osoto Gallery. That's a tremendous judo or jiu-jitsu takedown. Followed up by that clothesline by someone as strong as the Pope. That's impressive. Again, I don't know about this continually trying to lift up 350. Yeah, that's that wears it down. I mean, that, that, but you know, doesn't seem like Pope slowing down, though. No. Middle row. Man, that was a lot. That was a lot of bulldog there. That was a lot of head to take down with that bulldog. Like, right. a, like a bull mastiff dog. And now with Abyss weakened, I'm, I'm not sure that he's weakened to the point where he's going to be able to close the lid oh, on it. Looks, we're going to find looks, out. Looks pretty weak. Abyss looks like he's hurting, Mike. He's hanging onto the ropes though, making sure that he doesn't go into the casket. But Pope, Pope just kicks him in, slam down the lid, and win the match. He's got it. Before he can close it, he's he's goozled here by the monster, cut him right around the throat and tosses him back in. We've got a lot of near situations in that casket. Whoa, wind him up, drive him down. And the black hole slam may prove to be the difference here. That might be all she wrote. Prone body of the Pope as Abyss drags him over towards the casket. Don't see much life now. Nah, nah, Pope, Pope. Pope seems to be like he might be done city. Black hole slam might get enough. And just kicks him and rolls him with his foot right into the casket. Well, I think that's all she wrote. Reaches across. He slams. Oh, no, no, no. No. As he tries to slam Stay down open. the lid, you see that De Niro has got, I think that's both of his, his arms. Yeah, he's like kind of. They're wedged right there. 
That's just now it's power versus power. Yeah, you, got, you got 350 on top. Yeah, well, I don't think. Oh. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, but Abyss really, look at the way Abyss is on the apron. He can't really use all of his weight to close the cast. Yeah, no, I agree. It seems like Pope out, you know, outpowered. He outpowered the monster Abyss. Don't expect to see that. But that's the case. And now the Pope's got the crowd truly supporting him. And they're just unleashing the shots. Yeah, it's just going street style right now. It's the Pope. Boom! Four up right in your jaw. Right upside the head is right off the four up. Is he going to go DDE? I think so, but As the knee pads come down, that's usually first step the signature move. Wow, look how much height. The Pope got right there. The D'Angelo De Niro Express. The DDE into the corner with a fist down. Pope's got to drag him. Hey, look, well, this is half the battle, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Abyss is just, he's just massive. It's just, I mean, it's one thing to hit him with a move like that. It's another to, to, to actually get him into that casket, which he's on the verge of doing. Abyss in. Look at Abyss, Hall even fits in that casket, and that thing's massive. Can he this slam is it. it? Yeah, Can I think so. He's got... Oh, oh, no! What the hell? Oh, no. He just pinched right through the side of the casket. Hey, what did he did he low blow him I think? What the uh, heck was looked that? like he did. He, he, Look at the blood oh. on the hands of Abyss. Oh. He punched him right. Oh, blood just dripping oh. from his from his hand and, and arm because of right the contact that he made you with gotta the be kidding me. That was my hell craziness. It's been a night of first to say the least at final resolution and put back whoa, in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Momentum behind the clothesline. Abyss still up. Oof. Oof. Well, shots in the top Oof. of the head. How many times has he got to hit him here to put him away? Got to keep hitting him. Just Abyss. I like this yeah, body shot. He, he's, he's making sure that Abyss can't hold on to the ropes, but oh, Abyss overpowered him to the apron, and now the two fight right, right on top of the casket here. Oh, they're low shot. Oh, no. Gonna go oh, that's my goodness. Oh, oh choke slammed him. Need a thud? Uh, this could do it. And does. The winner of the match, the monster of Pants. Well, it wasn't pretty, but it was physical. Well, we said at the top of this match, that this was right up the alley, right in the realm, the world, for the monster abyss. Now, he got it done. Happy, it does. Physicality, brutality, it continues tonight in final resolution as, yes, the monster abyss victorious in the casket match. Joe, Jeff, just a quick reminder of some rules we know earlier today. today. Hold on, listen. Guys, when we get to the ropes, I'm going to need a clean break, okay? Gotta have a clean break, all right? And another quick reminder. I've heard it. The only way to win this match is by submission or tap out inside of the ring, okay? Guys, have a good one. I'll see you out there. Oh. Hey, 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 Guys, back off. Back off. Back off. Get him out of here. Come on. Oh, come on, Jerry. You got to be kidding me. Back off. Talk about a whacked out turn of events there. Never thought I would see Jarrett win this match via submission. Not only just a submission, Samoa Joe's rear choke. This man put on a clinic that the entire Gracie family had to admire. I think it's adorable you're walking around here tonight calling yourself a mixed martial arts specialist. Hey, look, big shoot fighter Jeff Jarrett. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff, when I've grounded you, when I've beat on you, when I've choked you out, it's going to take a whole hell of a lot more than your new hillbilly girlfriends to wake your ass up.
You saw exactly. I gave a demonstration. I gave an exhibition. Did I? Did I not? No. Did I not show four moves that I've perfected? Just versions of my rear naked choke, versions of the ankle lock, versions of whatever god awful submissions he was doing out there. They're symptoms of a man with no substance, no heart, nothing to stand on, nothing to put behind him. When the time comes, you make them pay to see it. What is there not to understand on that? Every day that Jeff wakes up, he considers himself a mixed martial artist. It's a good day for me, because that's one less day that I have to chase him down. And on that day when he wakes up, on the morning that he knows that he has to face me, I pray to God Jeff has completely convinced himself he's the next Helio Gracie. Because at the end of the night, I'll convince him he was just another victim. Can the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, prove his MMA expertise? Or will Samoa Joe prove why he is the Samoan submission machine? The following contest is a submissions match. Introducing Corsabal, about to make his way to the ring from Hendersonville, Tennessee. We're at 235 pounds. Jarrett! Jarrett! Jeff Jarrett can play that what we just saw from Gunner and Murphy wasn't a setup, but I gotta tell you, that was a preemptive strike if I oh, ever oh, see one. But look, I think you're probably right. You kinda you can't see. You don't know that for fact. Oh, really? For the love of God. I, you don't know. You, you, you can assume. You gotta put a qualifier on it or something. You can't just say. No. This time, this, I don't think this time we do. Not as often as we've seen Gunner and Murphy do the dirty work for Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, I get you. One thing I'll agree with when it comes to Joe's comments, I think Jarrett has actually convinced himself. Well, that's and right. that may be half the battle. That is, that's, that might be more than in the battle. But for the man's confidence, Jared really believes that. And I'll tell you, he looked pretty good with his uh, MMA skills that and he's shown. Introducing his opponent from the Isle of Samoa, weighing in at 282 pounds, the Samoan submission machine, Samoa! interested in seeing the condition of Samoa Joe after that backstage attack by Gunner and Murphy to see if he's... Well, you see TNA trainers trying to tell Joe, don't, don't, uh, don't go compete. Good luck with that. Well, I, I, I'll tell you, if I'm Jeff Jarrett right now, that's a, that ankle or lower leg, whatever he's got going on there, is a target. That's a big target. And Jeff Jarrett is a veteran to the max. You know, you know he's going to zone after the lower leg of Samoa Joe. Now like a flashing neon sign. It's right there for Jeff Jarrett. Oh, the smile on the face of Jeff Jarrett tells you just exactly how cocky he is about winning the submission match. And that is the only way that you can. You force your opponent to either tap, submit, it's the only way you can win it. And you know, Joe had talked about, you play shoot fighter with me, I'm gonna ground you, I'm gonna beat on you, then I'm gonna choke you out. And we'll see if he can fight through that pre-match attack. Well, I definitely, you know, it's pretty obvious that Joe will have the advantage. You know, that this is, this we talked about a casket match being a business realm. I, I would definitely say that the uh, submission match obviously is Joe's realm when you have the moniker Samoan submission machine, you know, you're pretty good at making people tap. But so far, you can see now is I said but, and you know, but, 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 but I, as soon as you said but, I was watching oh, Joe in the corner but. favoring the leg. See, when someone says but, they have something else to say. Let's not worry about that transition when I'm pointing out that, that Joe's still favoring the leg that was injured before the match well, by Gunnar Murphy. Well, he got attacked by Gunnar Murphy with the nightstick. Of course so he's still injured. The key at this point is watching to see how Joe's going to react after that attack. Well, he's got to try and keep the leg away from Jared. I don't know what I was saying with the butt. I forgot. Good. Anyway, look, look, look at that. That's an Ippon. That's called an Ippon Sayanagi. That's a one-arm shoulder throw. Some people might confuse it with an arm drag. It's not an arm drag. 
Good way to take your opponent's arm yeah. right out of the socket, especially the way you have that yep. weight and the weight of your opponent actually going over. It just works against your own arm. Key with that movement. Now you see right there, going after uh, oh, no. a little leg for a second of, of Joe. I was going to say the key to that move, that Sayanagi arm throw, is getting your shoulder underneath the guy's armpit. Oh, look at that. See, is he, is he oh, challenging yeah. him? Go for the guard? He wants to be on bottom. Yeah, that's exactly right. He wants to be in his gap. Joe knows God well. He could be very dangerous down there. Yeah, a lot of people think that being on your back in the guard oh, is, no, no. Is, a, is a bad place oh, yes. to be, but Joe's showing you right yep. there that you turn it yep. around. Well, that's a, that's a Juji Katani right there. You saw uh, Jeff Jarrett use that in his double M, double A, MCO, whatever that was called. I don't remember. It was a double J. <laughs> yeah, that was a double M A exhibition. Joe is just begging. Oh, now Joe get up. He should have stayed on bottom, maybe, but no, he's got yeah. he's got something planned. And Jarrett, how fortunate for him that he was that close to the ropes. Yeah, Keeley had a key lock on the jar. I could tell the way his body was positioned. Strikes by Joe. A series of rights. Catches him with an occasional left, but it's, it's mostly those rapid fire piston like right hands in the corner. Oh, you're not kidding. That's what Joe does so well, not only in regards to submission and, and different holes and whatnot. It, it's, he's an excellent striker to boot. And Jared oh, got the ankle. Got that. Got that ankle. Yeah, drops down to the floor and not good for Joe because yeah, the already injured ankle gets wrapped right around the steel post. Now you look up, Joe. Well, now you can just sense the confidence rise for, for Jeff Jarrett. He's got an ankle bar, an ankle lock on there, different version of it. Telling Joe to tap, and you can you can see as Joe fights through the pain. And you can see how Joe's instep is going the opposite way. Well, that figure four grip, that's the grip that Jared has on when you use a, an ankle lock, any kind of a bar. That's a figure four grip. Very, very tight grip. And Jared is able to get Joe back out towards the center of the ring, and that makes that hold even more effective because now Joe has to not only fight through the pain, but he's also going to try and fight his way to a break, either by the ropes or maybe using the free leg. Yeah. Nice roll through by Joe, who's a... Obviously a very large man, but he's extremely athletic and quick. And Jarrett won't even let Joe get back up to his feet as he tries to go back for the ankle again. A weakened Joe staggers back, but oh man. I think Joe figures that maybe I go for a knockout blow with the strikes. Yeah, well Joe, Joe again got a big shot a single leg there quick. Oh, Jarrett, now he's caught. That? Roll through into the submission. He's in a court right there, a nasty leg bar. How quick did Joe pull that off? Jarrett going to reach out, try and make contact with the ropes, but he's oh, he finally got it. Well, excellent mat sense by Jeff Jarrett. Like the man's antics or not, he knew where he was in the ring. He was looking at the rope, but he was in a lot of pain. He was able to get over there and grab it to break it. Discus style forearm oh. shot drops down. Backsplash leads to not a cover because that's not going to win you the match. You've got to get a submission. Make your opponent tap, submit, and Joe back on the arm. Yep. Key lock in the arm. I thought maybe he was going to turn that some sort of a Kimura, but he didn't do it. And how about the not weight? Yet. <laughs> how about the weight of Joe across the head and face of Chair? It's just adding well, more pain. That's that's all a part of knowing well, that the keeps little the, intricacies right, of submission wrestling. The nuances, and that's what keeps the man down. You're keeping his wing down, his shoulders, half of his body with all your oh. weight on his pec, his pectoral muscle, while you have, have the arm bar. Strikes for Joe. Right hand on the button. Oof, oh, got caught right there. Power bomb. And now, oh, that looks like Texas Cloverleaf time, my man, right there. It does. That's a nasty, nasty leg submission. Is it Jarrett going to tap here? And again, ring positioning may be the key. Jarrett's got a long way to go to get to the ropes. Made famous, in my opinion, by a tremendous Matt Tactician. A man by the name of Dean Malenko. 
Jeff Jarrett doing the right thing and getting himself out of the ring and put the brakes on this thing. I've got to ask you a question. In terms of that submission, did that, the ankle injury or the leg injury of Joe, does it, does it hurt him at all in a submission move like that? Does it maybe take away a power of a submission you know, move? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit, but right now he's got he's tapping out. Looks like... Yeah, but they're outside the ring. We from referee Brian Hebner, the, the pre-match like he was tapping. Well, he did, but he was outside the ring. Remember the submission rules. We heard them from, from referee right, Hebner. Right. I heard the match. It's got to be inside the ropes. I heard him. So, I yeah, for, for sure, Jarrett tapped. To break the hold. Because he knew it was on the outside. Sure. It didn't matter. He doesn't lose. Oh, exactly. Oh, now you've got him inside the ropes, Joe. Look at that nice arm bar. Watch him lean back with all of his weight. And Tapping up. Oh, wait, no, no, his foot's under the bottom rope. That's right. He tapped at the same time he was And I think the reason he tapped was so that he could break the hole. Garrett knowing all Smart veteran. He's playing as Jeff Jarrett is trying to survive in the process. That's what Joe needs not to get fussed. Did you notice Ooh, the man. hesitation right there? You could see he wasn't comfortable putting all his weight. And as a matter of fact, when he took Jarrett down, he had to hold on to the rope because he's favoring well, his ankle. You well, really see does. the longer this match goes, how that attack is affecting him. Muscle buster, well, it would be a way to weaken Jeff, that's for sure. And you can even see Joe right there having problems getting with that muscle buster, moving Jarrett out to the ring. Here we go. Well, that's that, that rear choke. This should do it. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> We're about to see Jeff Jarrett. Tap. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gunner Murphy back out here again. And... Oh. I mean, Joe, it's, it's hard to blame him for losing his focus after what they did to him earlier before the match. But at the same time, when his concentration turns to Gunner and Murphy, he leaves himself exposed to, to whoa, Jeff whoa, whoa, Jarrett. Right to the ankle. Drags him back out. There it is. Ankle oh, lock. He's going to put it on. Yep, Jarrett's got it. Boy, this is tough. Previously injured leg. Oh, yeah. Joe, what do you do? Well, we don't know if the trainers tried to stop Joe from competing. We don't know what kind of internal damage is in those little bones in your joint of your ankle. Oh, he's screaming through the pain. So many little bones in there. He, 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 just, he just submitted. The winner of the match via submission, Chip! Well, Samoa Joe obviously came into this match thanks to Gunnar Murphy with a, an issue with the ankle. Joe never had that first step, that explosion, that first step explosion with his feet due to his ankle no, issue. And, and that's so important to his Joe offense absolutely. because the way he likes to exploit the, yeah, exactly. the weight, the size advantage against his opponents, and it, it takes that part of his game totally away from him. Jeff Jarrett gets the win, final resolution, submission rules match with the ankle lock as we go to Christy Hemi with special ref, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, with all the history you've had with Jeff Hardy, are you really, really gonna call it down the middle? This, this is the, uh, not the Jeff Hardy of old, but the, the, the new Jeff Hardy, the one that does whatever he wants, right? The one that goes into business for himself. That Jeff Hardy, is that the one you're talking about? Hey, let me get this straight. You care that I call it right down the middle? Just, just fair. 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 What's up, Kenny? Big favor I gotta ask you tonight, all right? You've already agreed to special guest referee. Thank you. But the reason I asked you to be a referee, because I know you'll do the right thing. And what, I need one more favor out of you. Okay? I want you to make this a no DQ match. Hear me out. We all know, hell, everyone in this arena right now knows Fortune will hit that ring, Immortal will hit that ring, hell, their grandmothers will hit that ring. As soon as I put Jeff Hardy in harm's way, they'll do anything it takes to keep that title around his waist. Let me take them out. Make this a no DQ match, and I promise I'll beat the dog snot out of all of them all by myself. And when I get my hands back on Hardy, you'll be looking at the world's new heavyweight champion. As I said, Matt, I'm gonna call it right down the middle, just, you know, like, like an asshole would. <laughs>
people are think I don't give anymore, but I give away concussions and they're free. I hope you get your chance real soon to give me a concussion, make me bleed, take my championship, because you deserve it. and decided to appoint a special referee for your rematch with Jeff Hardy. And guess who that will be? It'll be me, Morgan! If you don't like the referee decision and you want that rematch and all that going on, you gotta beat me tonight, buddy, right here. He might need ice for his jaw if Matt Morgan hits that carbon footprint in this match and goes on to name who he feels would be the referee at final resolution against Jeff Hardy for the TNA title. Now that is if Matt Morgan is victorious. But if Ric Flair wins this matchup, he's out of the title shot against Hardy at final resolution. Oh, man, the Hardy on footprint. I get to call who the special guest referee is versus Jeff Hardy at final resolution. Wait a minute. Here comes Fortune flying down to the ring. Fortune taking their, picking their shots on Matt Morgan. Matt Morgan get stopped and the world champ is armed jeff hardy's got the steel chair my god mr anderson is back you are in need of somebody to referee your match i just make Noah a certain asshole who could maybe do that for you i think that sunday the bigger man will win the blueprint matt morgan attempts to capture his first TNA World Heavyweight Championship against the Antichrist of Wrestling, Jeff Hardy. Mr. Anderson is the special guest referee. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for our final resolution main event. This is the big one, TNA World Heavyweight title. It's on the line. Here we go. Jeff Hardy is probably the most bizarre 
Oscar World Heavyweight Champion of all time. I mean, Mike, is that a stretch? Proud right? to be known. Can you think of anybody else? I mean, he's proud to be known as the Antichrist of professional wrestling. What more proof do you need? And how about Mr. Anderson, not only the third man in the ring, but it's going to be no disqualification because Matt Morgan does not want a mortal to cost him his title shot. We're going to turn him loose right after the official in-ring intros from Jeremy Borash. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is your main event of the evening for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. This matchup, a 60-minute time limit, and you're... And this matchup is no disqualification. Introducing, first of all, the challenger. Standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 326 pounds and comes to us from Fairfield, Connecticut. He is the number one contender for the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World, the Blueprint. Matt Morgan! And now, introducing his opponent. He weighed in this morning at 235 pounds and comes to us from Cameron, North Carolina. Since 10, 10, 10, he is the undefeated, undisputed TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, the self-proclaimed Antichrist of Professional Wrestling, the Charismatic Enigma, Chef Hardy! Bischoff has labeled Jeff Hardy as the most important person in the wrestling universe and the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Well, when you're the, the time has come to put that belt on the line, you're right. Yep. It goes with the territory, yep. doesn't it? Well, yeah, exactly. I, I agree with Bischoff in, in regards to that. So, you know, right now, this is a monumental task. Look at the size. Just taking up so much of the ring as Matt Morgan. And as we said, these two have a turning point. They went. They were physical. Size, edge, as Taz pointed out. Got to be huge here for Morgan. The big seven-footer, 300 pounds. We have Taz in the neighborhood of about a 70-pound weight yeah, advantage. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, you know, the champion, I mean, definitely giving up that size, as you're saying. Also, I mean, listen. <laughs> If you're Jeff Hardy, I mean, you got to worry about the, uh, the referee. It's Mr. Anderson. Split the guy's skull open, gave him a concussion, almost ended his career. And you can see right there, Mr. Anderson not not giving a five count. Well, it's no disqualification, so why would he? Well, I guess because referees always do it, even though it's not, even though it's wrong. You know, you see it all the time in matches. Right? That would be wrong. It is wrong, but a lot of things people do wrong in life. I digress. Well, right now, Matt Morgan, now look at this! He's defenseless, oh. and Morgan takes advantage, runs down the apron, and drops the leg right across the champ's chest. Again, I, I, you, know, you know, we heard Morgan, you brought it forward, that he wants it, wanted a dis, uh, no disqualification. He asked Anderson for that, because he wants a mortal members coming out here. I, I don't agree with that. I don't know why Matt Morgan, I understand his pride, but I don't agree with that at all. Not only that he wants them to come out here as much as he's anticipating that they would, 
And I don't think he wants to see a mortal come out, maybe cause Hardy to get disqualified, oh. right? And right, get, yeah, keep yeah. the title because of the disqualification. I think that that probably was the mindset of Morgan when he went to Anderson and said, let's make this no disqualification. I wish the Anderson tell him, tell Jeff, bring it in the ring, tell the champion, let's get this thing in the ring. It's no disqualification doesn't mean it's no counter. So it's, that's a different, uh, that's a different bag of animal crackers. Smart move, in my opinion, by Hardy at this point. You weaken the blueprint, Matt Morgan, and you take away the size advantage and, and, and edge that he has against you by keeping yes. him down in this position. You wear him yep. down. You wear him down. And keep take him down. Control. Keep him down, and then you can, you're able to hit some of your high octane offense that the TNA World Champion possesses. Look at that. Laying in the rights, and they're not having any effect in the least. That time he surprised him. Doubled him over with the boot, and Morgan still able to shoot him to the corner where Hardy catches him with the elbow. And look at that. Wow, went, wow, went, wow. went whisper in the wind, and Morgan moved out of the way. With quickness by the big redwood, the big massive blueprint. Oh, that's just get tagged. That's the <laughs> offense goes Morgan. He's Repeatedly getting tagged. Follow up in the corner, putting the 300 pounds right against the chest of the champ. It's amazing. As he comes back out, side it's slam. More impressive than amazing how fleet footed, how quick Matt Morgan is. Well, Doc in his athletic background, yeah, tremendous just, basketball he's player. He's just so damn athletic, sure you can just see it with his movement. He's focused, he's a focused competitor. That was a focus. Discus clothesline pin. Here's two from oh. Anderson, and the special ref says oh. only two. So Anderson, that was a good legal straight up count. You would think that maybe he's uh, going to try and quick count Jeff Hardy, who got to assume. But you could see that Morgan agreed with the cadence of the count from the referee. Boots up in the corner from Hardy and measures, but. Well, power, yeah. man. Strength and power. Uh, caught him in mid-move. Can toy with him here. You know he loves to go. Oh. Fall away, but instead oh, this go, time he him. him down right into a pin for two. I think nine times out of ten we see Morgan go fall away slam and probably to, to just mix up the offense here against Hardy. Yeah, he went a different direction. You got to like that. Vary your offense. Yeah, you keep got your it. opponent guessing. Keep him guessing. So he's, you got him on his toe. Oh, twist the hate. Twist the hate. Here That's it. Came out of nowhere. Anderson counts two. And whoa. Oh, that's got to frustrate that often, that. That's got to frustrate the champ. I don't think uh, Hart is too happy with Anderson. Anderson. Did you say that he probably didn't have Morgan sufficiently weakened to the point when he hit that twist of hate, former twist of faith that oh, that maybe was the difference as Morgan was able to power out before three? Oh, oh my God. God. Footprint. Oh, but wait a minute. I don't know that our camera picked that up, but I just noticed. There it is. When he hit him with the carbon footprint, it was, oh, it was sort me, of a yeah. tweak or a twist. That don't look too good. Yeah, go for the pin right now. I don't blame him. Gets one, gets two. Well, like it or not, that's smart by Hardy. Why exert the energy to kick out when you you know your ring positioning and utilize that bottom rope to break up the pin cup? You gotta wonder how that. What if he didn't pop a jerk like that? Kind of like a, a slight dislocation in his knee. That can happen where it pops back in. Well, especially on a move like that carbon footprint where, yeah. where, you're, where you're off balance, well, where you're, you're relying on one leg. Not only that, you got those long, long it's legs. True. You know? That's true. Let's, let's, no. let's see here with the power. He's still able to take him up. And base, no, no, base no. The base isn't there. Yep. Twist up, up, up twist again. Again. Wow. That champ cover. That's the full Monty. That's the full Here Monty. Here's two. Oh. Oh. Shows you the importance of this TNA World Heavyweight title match as the challenger Matt Morgan digs deep to avoid the three. Double, you, I mean, slow, I, I, double sledge, leg drop. He's throwing everything so, at Morgan. I, I, go, go. No, I know I tried to get, I know you did too. We both tried to get at different times a word with, with Jeff Hardy. He, you couldn't find him. He was kind of focused all day from we heard. He was like a recluse. Focusing. Oh! What a counter on Matt Morgan. 
So he kind of been like behind closed doors that was hard most of the day, right? You couldn't fight him? No, not at all. Well, he went swanton right there, and I think Morgan got the legs and knees up. And I don't know that that helps Morgan any because of the landing being on the previous uh, injured leg. I disagree. It does help. It does right. help. If, well, no, because it stops him. <laughs> That move that, that that Hardy has beat many men I'm with. I'm with you. I'm with you to that point. You gotta sacrifice yourself sometimes to, to live another day. But think of the potential for further damage to that knee that he tweaked. Mike, in with the all moment. the weight of Hardy coming off the top. In the moment, you gotta stop the guy from getting his I'm big stuff you. on you. I'm with you. I think you have to do it just out of natural oh, reaction. Oh, 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 oh. But I'm not sure that it was the right Mike, move for Morgan leaving. in retrospect. He's leaving, Mike. The champion's walking out. Oh. If he walks out, it's a count out. Come on! When you strike, you know, you're, to your point you're about to make, you can't lose the title yeah. on a count out. I'm listening to the count. Stop me in mid sentence. Did Anderson? He's at eight. Nine. They're gonna shortcut it. Listen, Hardy. you just saw Hardy counting nine. Hardy's count. Well, Morgan stopped. I mean, Anderson stopped before he counted to ten. Shakes his head. No. Well, it looks like the referee's gonna take uh, business in his own hands. Get back in the ring. Get 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 back in the ring. Get in the ring. Get in the ring. Get in the ring. Get in the ring. No disqualification, so <laughs> I guess well, he's just, you could just, just sense oh. Anderson steaming. You could just sense him boiling. Just reach that boiling point and finally just boil right over. Explodes with the rights. Here we go. That's it. Toss the champ back in. No count outs. Well, how long special is special referee, Mr. Anderson. How long has Anderson been waiting to do that? There it is. And roll up. Champ shoulders down. Anderson counts two. Oh. And Anderson still won't quick count him. I respect that. Got to see if the challenger maybe he goes to the power game. Let's see how it works. Nope. Hardy able to float over. Looks like he's still favoring that leg. Is, is Morgan oh, there? Third time with a twist. Hey, third one. Third's got to be the charm, but oh, no rush for the ref. No rush for the ref. <laughs> Little different situation here. One. Two. Is he going to get three? Count. Only two. I was like, that's a close near for him. Not two of nine tenths. Yeah. <laughs> Throughout this match, we talked about how Mr. Anderson was calling it right down the middle. Finally, Hardy tries to, to walk out, get counted out. And we saw that, that, that competitive side of Anderson surface. We get Hardy back in. Oh, God. Oh, God. Man, that was genius right there by Jeff Hardy. It's no disqualification. Oh. You can use the chair as he just did. Yes, sir. That knee that was tweaked earlier on the carbon footprint comes back here at this point to, to hurt Morgan. Oh! Oh, went for the twist oh, again. Yeah. Wow. wow, was there what a contact impact. made there. Big time impact. Oh! <laughs> carbon oh, footprint. That was a knockout blow. Was the ref. Oh, God. Again. You can hear the crowd here. They're at seven, well, eight, nine. Up. We should have oh. a new champion right here. Well, <laughs> We saw that turn the point where, oh, wait, what the hell is this? It's, it's Eric Bischoff. It's the rookie ref, Jackson James. What about turn point? Jackson James is the ref at turn point. Where, oh. Now you! He, he, Bischoff just posted Mr. Anderson. Whoa, 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 tosses Jackson James. Did he count three right there? I did, did he get? No, I guess, no, just two judging by the reaction of Morgan. I think Eric Fisher got caught up in the moment there. I'm good. 
And with Bischoff out here, not only taking Anderson out of the match, replacing him with referee Jackson James. Hardy down, Hardy out, and Morgan can sense that he might be able to put him away with one choke slam. Is that what he's signaling? That's what it seems like. He's got the chair in place. Yeah, no disqualification. I should say. Oh, choke slam him on the chair. No, blow blow by Hardy. Push the head. Push the head. Oh, right into the steel chair. My God, he hit it to perfection, and the referee reluctantly counts three. The winner of the match. Somehow, some way, Jeff Hardy is able to retain his TNA title. And I think I know that somehow, in some way, that has something to do with Eric Bischoff. I look at Mr. Anderson. My God, it's split open. I'm assuming look at the, that's look what he got the, posted. Turns up like a puddle of blood. The back of the head of Anderson that he's laying in, of course, it's what he got posted by Bischoff. Look at that. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. This man is had... Okay, you, see, you see Anderson out here in that pool of blood, and you immediately think back to when he was cracked yeah. over the head, the head trauma, the concussion issues, when Hardy hit him with the steel chair. God, it's tough to look. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Right, we just saw in the beginning of the match with Matt Morgan. He controlled this thing. He had control of the champion. And he was looking really good, I mean, and then, uh, it kind of was a back and forth type deal, but Matt Morgan had the wearable to stay on top and tweak his knee. I think that was the carpet footprint where he tweaked his knee a bit. Twist the several, Hayes several, 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 several times. Twist the Hayes. Remember that swanton off the top yeah, where the was, knees came into play? We all knew that. That was a big part of this okay. match going forward. Okay. And Hardy was trying to get the count out. Referee Mr. Anderson would not have it. And again, no disqualification, so that, that was uh, okay. How about that contact? Full speed, goes Hardy into Anderson. He gets knocked out. Carbon footprint, and the, the fans here counted to about 20. Should have. Well, Matt Morgan is champion, but then Bischoff comes down. Oh, God, there goes Anderson in the post. And well, then he, then I think, did you notice how he had second thoughts well, when he wants to toss him in because Morgan was on top at that point? Correct. Of course. And it was like, I mean, look, we saw Shades of Turning Point last month. We saw the pinfall by Morgan on Jeff Hardy, rookie referee, brutal call last month. This time, a lot of shenanigans and outside interference by Bischoff and oh, Anderson. Just covered with blood. Lady, oh, God, wow. ladies and gentlemen, tonight at Final Resolution, Jeff Hardy, he escapes with the TNA World Heavyweight title and Immortal remains in control.